During an appearance in the White House briefing room, the president said there are Republicans on both sides of the Capitol who know that immigration reform is the right thing to do. He said House GOP leaders just won't let the bill that was approved by the Senate come before the House. It's hard politics uh, for uh, Republicans uh, because there's some in their base that are very opposed to this. The president's comments came a day after he spoke with Majority Leader Eric Cantor, who issued a sharply worded statement saying the president still has not learned how to work effectively with lawmakers. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. As the nation continues in the grip of a heroin epidemic, Attorney General Holder is urging the use of an overdose reversal drug to save lives. Correspondent Sandy Kozell has the details. The Attorney General says the resurgence in heroin abuse must be dealt with. It is something that is truly a national right. problem. Speaking to a national conference of police department officials, Eric Holder urged first responders to use an overdose reversal drug to help save lives. If administered in an appropriate way and in a timely way, uh, I don't understand all of the, you know, the chemical things, but it's almost in some ways like a, a, a wonder. The reversal drug, commonly referred to as Narcan, can restore breathing to someone experiencing a heroin overdose. Sandy Kozell, Washington. He admits to smoking crack while in a drunken stupor and other antics, but in battle, Toronto Mayor Rob Ford has officially launched his re-election campaign. Ed Donahue has more. Ford is running again after acknowledging last year he had smoked crack cocaine in a drunken stupor. No matter what might have destroyed on me, my message couldn't be clear. I won't back down. Ford admitted there were some rocky moments, and when you make mistakes, you learn a lot about yourself. You folks will continue to have the most open, honest, fair, hardworking mayor that this city has ever seen. After admitting to smoking crack, the city council in Toronto removed most of Ford's powers. I'm Ed Donahue. A happy surprise for a former first couple. Bill and Hillary Clinton's daughter Chelsea says she's giving her parents their first grandchild. Correspondent Warren Levinson has the details. Former first daughter Chelsea Clinton is going to have a baby. She made the announcement at the end of a Clinton Foundation event on empowering girls. Mark and I are very excited that we have our first child arriving later this year. The daughter of Bill and Hillary Clinton is 34 and vice chair of the Clinton Foundation. She and her husband, investment banker Mark Mesvinsky, have been married since 2010. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton was on the panel as well. She says she's pretty excited about becoming a grandmother. Warren Levinson, New York. A literary giant is being remembered today. Nobel laureate Gabriel Garcia Marquez has died in Mexico. He was 87. Ed Donahue has a look at the life of the writer. He was known to millions as Gabo. His work spawned comparisons with Mark Twain and Charles Dickens and outsold everything published in Spanish except the Bible. Garcia Marquez's epic 1967 novel, 100 Years of Solitude, sold more than 50 million copies in more than 25 languages. His novels became synonymous with Latin America itself. President Obama says the world has lost one of its greatest visionary writers. Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos said a thousand years of loneliness and sadness for the death of the greatest Colombian of all time. I'm Ed Donahue. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Rick Young. This is the Onion Week in Review. Citing his erratic social behavior, nondescript occupation, and habit of accidentally walking off piers while pretending to read newspapers, acquaintances of 37-year-old Jeff Walters suspect he may be a bumbling spy. Residents of Worcester, Massachusetts are kind of hoping a Panera Bread will show up and plow over an obnoxious neighborhood bakery. Locals have said that the soulless restaurant chain with its simple, impersonal experience would be just the thing to help run the precious mom-and-pop establishment out of business. Callahan's is really lovely and all, but it would be such a relief to have some college-aged kid take my order without making eye contact. I just need a cup of coffee. You know, we're not friends. A follow-up survey of Worcester residents confirmed that 72% of patrons would rather be alerted of an order by a vibrating pager than a kind-faced woman who calls everybody sweetheart. In other news, feds break up a brutal Las Vegas man-fighting ring. A Christmas card ominously makes no mention of the twins. And the Boy Scouts celebrate 100 years of preparing teens for not having cool friends. This is the Onion News Network.
This is Free Talk Live. You're listening to the live Sunday night show. And yes, we are live. It's a Sunday, and I actually hear it's some kind of holiday about fertility and bunnies. <laughs> oh, happy Ishtar. Yeah, or, oh, that's wait, right. Whoops. It's Ishtar. And uh, with you tonight on this special Ishtar Sunday is me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. <laughs> now, Free Talk Live is a call-in show, so that means you can actually take control of the airwaves, call us, Bring up anything that's on your mind, anything you want to discuss, and the number to do that is 855-450-3733. You can also call us on Skype at lrn.fm. And since we are live tonight, I figured, um, you know, there's a really important study that just came out, and I really wanted to talk about it on the show today. And Mark, you had seen this too. There was a study done by Princeton. And they looked at what kind of government America has. Now, you might think, well, of of course. It's a republic. (laughs) It says right in the fact, the document says republic. (laughs) You might think it's a republic because that's what you get told by the conservatives. But what the hell's a republic? I mean. (laughs) Well, okay. uh, Let me see. This is ridiculous. But let me see if I can try to take the conservative position. Well, Mark, a republic means (laughs) that we elect people to... uh, you know, represent us, right? And I don't even know what a republic means. <laughs> okay, so okay. First off, the okay. Let's talk about the etymology of these two words. Uh-huh. One of them means by the people, and the other one means like of the people. Okay. Okay. What's so, the difference? Yeah, nothing. <laughs> one is Greek. One is Latin. Okay. Well, the other thing that you hear about American government is that it's a democracy. Well. Uh, Okay, right. But I mean, republic, just to define it, part of the word is rep, representative. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Meaning that it's it's representative of the public, not necessarily by the public. And you, you put in, yeah, you put in elected oh, so officials there's, there's that a do it. Middle manager so the, in between yeah, there. I mean, so the word actually makes a good good amount of sense okay, for so what it describes, ironically. I wasn't terribly far off in my yeah. original now, definition. But, but equally, I want to point out that, uh, you know, someone asked this question a couple hundred years ago to Benjamin Franklin saying, you know, what exactly when, you know, of course, this is, uh, you know, this might not actually be a true story, but it's been accepted as true, is that when they're leaving the Constitutional Convention. A republic, you know, madam. Yeah. What, 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 what kind of government do we have, uh, Mr. Franklin? And it's like a republic if you can keep it. You know, so uh, very dramatic. Right. Well, yeah, and uh, let's not forget which people are we referring to? When Benjamin Franklin was talking about it, we were only talking about um, land owning, which meant basically white, um, white right. land owning males of twenty one years yeah. old or older, and that was you know the deal. So, which sure. public are we representing at that point? That's essentially only the heads of household that owned land but you know i wonder if if franklin in his genius and he was a genius uh, i wouldn't doubt that you know uh did he did he know what lysander spooner knew in that he his phrasing being if you can keep it if he knew that the constitution could actually lend itself to not be a republic yeah Yeah, i mean i wonder if 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 he had that foresight because of course lysander spooner certainly seemed to think so Mm mm-hmm so this was for the Constitution. Was was Franklin around for that one, or was he around for? Was this the uh, Articles of Confederation? I'm a little confused. No, on this. this was for the the Constitution. Okay. All right. Well, so 1789. Then it's interesting that you pointed out the sort of white landowning people as the ones who are being represented in a republic, right? Because Mm -hmm. there is often this tension between people who say America is a republic and we need to keep it that way. And the people who say America is a democracy, like the people who want it to be a democracy, I think maybe tend to be a little more left leaning or progressive. Well, I don't know that I don't hear too many people saying it's a democracy and they're like, they're, they're, they've, planted their flag in that what mostly you hear is sort of people saying because we are told our whole lives it's democracy they say it's a democracy and then the republicans among us will say whoa 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 not a democracy it's a republic the founding document says so as though that means anything i mean right. there's a you know what what you would call a direct strict democracy like a new england town meeting here uh, where we have you know, everybody in the town can potentially get together in a room and vote up or vote down, spending things. Now, I don't see this as it's rare that there's uh, split along lines unless it's a contentious, expensive issue. I see most of these things passing com- unanimously in these uh, events because people don't want to, you know, they don't want to vote no if they don't think anybody else is going to vote no. Every right. time I go and to these, still- I'm the only guy saying no. And it's still the problem <laughs> of like your interests are not being honored or represented at all. Sure. 
if you don't agree with the majority. <laughs> but what's the difference between a representative democracy and a republic? Because you hear representative democracy sometimes, too. Um, I, I think that a representative democracy is, is an accurate statement for what we have. I mean, you know, that's it's fine. The, the, we have a republic where the representatives are democratically elected. Yep. Um, you, you can use the term republic. You can use the term, uh, you know, representative democracy, either one of these things, if, if that's what you wish to use to describe this. Um, the question is, is has it uh, secured our freedoms. They're supposed to be rights. The idea of the Bill of Rights was written into the Constitution so that we would have these rights uh, that would be among them being um, the ones that are written here and, and they would be, you know, secured. And they haven't been. Th throughout this country's history, these Bill of Rights things have been attenuated and, uh, you know, defined by the Supreme Court in ways to mean that they aren't rights. Yeah. If you have the right to keep and bear arms... You have the right to keep and bear arms, not if the city says it's okay or ha if you have to get a permit or whatever. And I just use this as an example. If you have the right to free speech, you have the right to free speech and the yeah, government no can't affect it. Right. Now, you can, I can affect it if you're on my property but beneath my window at midnight yodeling. Yes. You don't have freedom of speech on my property. But on your property, you should be able to uh, yodel as long as your yodeling isn't loud enough to go across bound property boundaries and into somebody else's window. Right. Now, I, I don't really care so much what kind of government America has because the idea that it's legit for somebody else to rule over everybody is has really lost all credibility with me. But it's really interesting regardless um, to see the results of this study. And uh, they have found, these researchers at Princeton, that America is not a democracy and not a republic. It's something else. Um, but we'll find out what that is in just a moment here because Ty is actually on the line on Skype. Hi, Ty. You're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Well, hey, I'm surprised. I, I didn't expect to get on so quick. Um, I just wanted to make a small correction. The The word republic, the etymology of the word republic, basically really means public affairs. It comes from the Latin, not Greek, res publica. And, oh, okay. and res, means, res means affair. And publica means the public. So it's just public affairs. That simple. Oh, I see. So it wasn't representative. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Right now, so the what, idea, what does that mean? Like, what, what is the translation of that etymology? Well, I don't know about the translation of the etymology, but the ideas really stem from Plato and uh, from his book, The Republic, mm -hmm. and uh, or his writings, The, the Republic. And, and in that one, he outlined basically the overall idea of the state quote unquote okay so is this a scary book or is this something that uh small government kind of minarchists tend to like or what well the small government and uh probably the republicans uh like it because mm -hmm. you know it's 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 one of their foundational documents but of course free people and people I would consider either anarchists or uh, voluntarists would not like it because it is a top-down type of thing. It's right. not a right. of the people, really. It, it's not a right. bubble-up deal. This is one of the things, the points that I make to uh, people when, look, I, I, I'm fine sitting around minarchists and people that want smaller government. I'm, I'm cool with that. That doesn't bother me. Um, but I, I'd like to point out that these ideas are how old is this with plato 4000 years old well yeah it's very old yeah very it's old. these are four well, a couple thousand not well i yeah, mean it was probably, before jesus yeah 400 BC, bc something around okay, there okay 2400 years all right sure and and at that point this is just him writing it down somebody else already thought of this and god knows how old it was at that point um you know athens was a democracy and these ideas are thousands of years old this is old technology <laughs> Can't I mean our our founding document is 225 or something 225 plus years old. We can't really in the world of the internet we can't come up with a better governing system than all the rich people get in Washington D um, you know use the power of Washington D.C. to control the planet. That's that's the best we can come up oh, with. Oh yeah, I mean the electoral college is for horse and buggy. Yeah, not, that's not the for purpose today. of it. Thanks yeah. for the call, Ty. This is Free Talk Live, the Sunday show. More coming up. Stay tuned. 
If you've got a 401k, IRA, or pension plan, I've got some really bad news for you. The IRS wants you to think these qualified plans are the best way to save for retirement. They give you a tax break when you contribute. Sounds good, right? Wrong. A qualified plan could be a tax disaster when you retire. With $17 trillion in debt, taxes are already going up. Imagine paying a top tax rate of 94% like the 1940s. There is a better way. It's an alternative the ultra-rich use that beats the pants off your IRA or 401k. It's been around for years. Your money grows tax-deferred, has no taxes in retirement, and no income taxes when you die. Plus, you can grow your money potentially double digits with no risk of losing money when the market crashes. If the market tanks like 2008, you lose nothing. Call 800-488-1677 now to get a free copy of my Inc. magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, to protect yourself from taxes and crashes. Just cover shipping and handling. The next 37 callers get a free trial to the Millionaire Black Box. 1-800-488-1677. Call 1-800-488-1677. 1-800-488-1677. Amanda Bosold here from Midas Resources. Today, April 4th, 2014, gold opened at $1297.60. A one-ounce gold coin can be purchased for $1344.77, $672.38 for a half ounce, or $336.19 for a quarter ounce. Again, that's $1344.77, $672.38, and $336.19. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. We know you're out there. We can feel you now. We know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. We don't know the future. We aren't here to tell you how this is going to end. We're here to tell you how it's going to begin. We're going back to editing the next edition of Freedom's Phoenix Digital Magazine now, where we are telling the people what you don't want them to know. We're showing them a world without you, a world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries, a world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice we leave to you. Subscribe at freedomsphoenixeasy.com. That's freedoms with an S, phoenixeasing.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Meowbit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. Meowbit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, Meowbit. Go to meowbit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, the live Sunday night show. Tonight, it's me, Stephanie, here with you. And Brian. And Mark. You can call us here on Free Talk Live and bring up anything that's on your mind at 855-450-3733. Of course, that is if you're not in church right now. Uh, if you're home on a Sunday night listening <laughs> to the radio, we are live. And uh, you can give us a call also on Skype at lrn.fm. And we want you to know that ProXPN sponsors our uh, call-in lines and our Skype. 
Yeah, as a matter of fact, usually, uh, Stephanie, um, church services are done at sunrise on Easter. That's the big deal. Is Easter oh. special because you get up and do the sunrise service at like 6 a.m.? Oh, yeah, you got to wow. worship the sun that when it comes up. That sounds like really <laughs> enjoyable. <Whoops. laughs> It is, you know, if you're going to get up early one day a year, it's it's good. If, if you don't get up early, it's good to get try it, uh, you know, one day a year. <laughs> I, I'm for it in that way because there's nothing. It's invigorating to have gotten up early. What if, well, as provided you get enough sleep, it is. Even if you didn't get enough sleep that one time, it's still invigorating. <laughs> oh, boy. I, uh, I'm going to have to disagree, but does it, it count it if you're depends up? depends if you have to or not. That's yeah, the difference. That's, I think you're right about that. But does it count if you're up from the night before doing your fertility right? Into um, the wee hours of the morning when the sun well, comes up? I don't know what counts as what. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Does it count as going to church? It, well, if you go to church, it counts as going to church, yes. <laughs> so you have to do your fertility right in the church. Got it. But going to church oh, is... Yes. Mark's, Mark's ish I advice. love it. All right. But but church, going to church is of no value. Even no <laughs> Christian, will, a Christian won't say that either. I mean, a, a church is just a place. It's uh, really about whatever, you know, your relationship is with uh, God. If uh, You know, for the Christians, that's what they would say. And, and I think that that's true for many of the the pagan sorts too where two or three gather in my name the lord is there yeah that, i, I think church. you can have it on your own too <laughs> go ahead i think two or three should gather in well there yeah. you go <laughs> what, however they wish star's <laughs> name <laughs> anyway you mentioned pro xpn stephanie uh what is pro xpn and i think this is uh you know if you value your privacy online and again, your online world is really, in today's day and age, has become just as important as your meat space world, as your real, as your analog world. Um, and and ProXPN is here to protect that, to encrypt that, to keep what is yours truly under your purview and not under the purview of your ISPs or the NSA or whoever else. Or someone else who might be sniffing your package. Sure, some bad actor, you know, at an airport. Okay? That always sounds like a double entendre to me. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, this actually, uh, we can talk about our experience, Brian. So you and I both use ProXPN mm -hmm. on our various devices, phones, computers, and so forth. And uh, we were at a bunch of places over the last couple of weeks because we were on the road traveling for Bitcoin conferences. Sure. So we were on public Wi-Fi networks, you know, the um, the hotels, the airports, and all that business. And I was concerned, you know, that going on those without using protection could be, lead to some nasty virus or <laughs> yeah. something. So, you know, ProXPN is great for that. Your All your data is encrypted as soon as it leaves your computer and no one can see um, what you're doing online. Yeah, and actually, it, not even just that, but it helped with, we were in Canada and uh, I couldn't access my music on my computer. So mm -hmm. I powered up my VPN because I I use Google Play uh, All Access, and uh, you know that's not available in some countries because somehow you cross these arbitrary lines, and suddenly you can't access your music. You know, yeah, as if it, like Hulu or certain YouTube videos. Sure, or, or and blocks. and so uh, I powered up my VPN, and oh yes, you're in the United States. Everything's just hunky dory. Right, and the I VPN could, will tell you. Will tell it tells the internet that right. you're in a different place. Mm -hmm. It's f amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Very, very handy to have for that reason alone. But then to encrypt everything from any bad actor, whoever that may be, uh, is phenomenal. I'm always amused. You know, you get those single ads, uh, singles ads where, um, you know, I'm not single, but I still get the ads where, you know, it'll put some, it puts the same people's pictures up no matter yeah. where you are. <laughs> yes. But they, and it says that she's in Hanukkah. Or, and you she know, wants to meet 40-year-old men, right? Right. She's <laughs> dying, right? This, this bust 19 year old is dying to find graying 40 year old man. Yeah. <laughs> she's, just, she's just hot for him, right? And, you know, this, uh, strangely, she, there's a bunch of women that look just like her that live around America. And it's always a town that's within driving distance, but not so close that your wife might find out. Um, <laughs> you know, and I mean, this is how it goes. But th these same ladies are over in, when I'll, I'll do it, at, and, and it'll, I'll, I'll oh, log be in into, the Netherlands. I'll, I'll log into the Netherlands or whether, <laughs> yeah, there's other attractive women that says you know i don't i can't speak netherlandish or whatever it is that they put in there um but yeah funny she doesn't even look druish um, yeah. <laughs> so i mean i have no idea what it says there yeah yeah no it is it's handy and so pro xpn it's available for practical almost anything uh ios android you know they have apps for those linux Windows, OS X, you take your pick you can use it uh and really you got to understand no matter where you're going in the world there may this is one of the biggest uh, companies, you know, VPN companies in the world. And they're growing all the time because they offer such a great service, uh, such a fast service for people to use. 
Okay. Uh, you you really... There's a lot of other VPNs out there, but the important thing to know about them is that not all of them are actually committed to your privacy and your freedom because a lot of them keep logs of what you're doing just like your ISPs might. Absolutely. Whereas ProXPN Pro does not do that. They've always been committed to that. They say that they, they're they on record saying, you know, if anybody asks us for logs, we'll tell them, A, we don't have them, and B, if we did, we wouldn't give them to you. Yeah, exactly. They, they tell the suits to take a hike. Uh, which you know that that's peace of mind that I think has almost no price, uh, and so. But talk about a great price. Use the code FTL twenty. You'll get twenty percent off the price of uh, of the account for the lifetime of the account that you go with, whatever you happen to go with, or you can go with Bitcoin and get a thirty percent discount. But bear in mind, it, with Bitcoin, you're only getting you can only get one discount at a time. So if you use Bitcoin, you're just getting the thirty percent. Yeah, because I misinformed people at one point. I thought it was twenty percent and then thirty percent off the twenty percent. My mistake. Yeah, no worries. Either way, you're getting a great price no matter what you do. Uh, and you're getting, in my opinion, a great service, one of the largest in the world. So, you know, I, I trust them, ProXPN.com. Absolutely. Speaking of uh, largest things in the world, the U.S. government is one of the largest governments in the world and the largest militaries and the largest uh, failures. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've got a study that we were just discussing in the last segment about what type of government the U.S. government actually is. And the answer may surprise you. It's uh, not a democracy. It's not a republic, as you may have been taught in school or heard from liberals or conservatives. Uh, a new study from Princeton has shed some light on what type the what type of government the U.S. government actually is. But first, we're going to go to the phones because uh, we love to talk to our callers here on Free Talk Live. And we've got Liberty Phoenix on the line on Skype. Hi, Liberty Phoenix. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. Happy 420. (laughs) Thank you. We don't, you know, Brian and I are, are just not interested in uh, pot or pot culture, but you know we'll take it. Uh, yeah, we'll take... I appreciate it all the Thank same. You for the well yeah. <laughs> I like that there's a new holiday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was listening to Sovereign Tech earlier, and uh, you oh, were thank mentioning you. Mega Man Three. That's by the way, that's Brian's me. podcast. He has a technology podcast called Sovereign Tech. S-O-V-R-Y-N-Tech. That's right. It's all about science and technology and how it can set you free. And like you said, s o v r y n tech dot com. Yep. And go ahead, Liberty Phoenix. Your your topic for uh, your game of the I think it was game of the week yes. was uh, Mega Man Three, and it it really inspired me to go play and celebrate my 420, just kind of hanging out and relaxing with the nostalgia of the old days and remembering back when the days were good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you didn't have to so, work. <laughs> you guys have a great Sunday, and uh, I'll be listening to the show. Thank you so much, Liberty Phoenix. Take care. And this is Free Talk Live. You call us at 855-450-3733, the ProXPN toll-free call-in lines. More coming up. If you own a business, you need customers, right? Well, your potential customers are listening to this radio program right now, and I can help you reach them. Hi, I'm Matt Brower, a national marketing executive at the radio network responsible for this program. I can help you customize a national radio campaign that fits your budget, large or small, while targeting your specific audience. Contact me to learn how radio advertising can make your business more profitable. M-B-R-O-W-E-R at GCNlive.com. That's mbrower at GCNlive.com. I'm David Cordeni, President and CEO of Cigna. We're proud to support the March of Dimes by walking in the March for Babies. It feels great to know that the money we raise funds life-saving research and programs that improve the health of babies. With your help, we can make this year better than ever. Join Cigna and our coworkers across the country in March for Babies to help more moms have full-term pregnancies and healthier babies. Start your team today at marchforbabies.org and march to help our babies. Thank you. Did you know there's a way that could save you thousands on your credit card debt without going to a credit counseling organization or to a debt consolidation company? Did you know this same strategy could help you completely settle all of your debt fast? To unlock this vital information for free and to discover how much you could save, call now, 1-800-928-5394. At FDR, we're not going to explain this strategy on the radio. What we can tell you is we've already helped thousands of Americans resolve over $2 billion in credit card and other unsecured debt. Why not add your debt to that? Again, to unlock this vital information to settling your debt as fast as possible, 
Call 1-800-928-5394. If you're struggling with debt, this may be the answer you've been looking for. Call now. The bigger your debt, the more you need this vital free information. To find out how much money you could save, call 1-800-928-5394. Find out for free at 1-800-928-5394. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're listening to the live Sunday night show. Yes, we are live on Sunday night. Tonight it's me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. And we are Free Talk Live. You can call us at 855-450-3733 and bring up anything that's on your mind. That's pretty unusual uh, among in the world of talk radio that you can call a show and bring up anything. You don't have to stick with the topic we're talking about. Bring up your own. So if uh, we've we've recently started a um, weekly newsletter, we always did email updates now and then, but we're doing a weekly newsletter and. It's really great. Uh, check it out. Just go to news.freetalklive.com. You can sign up there for the newsletter, the updates list. Um, also, we have uh, information about our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter there. So it's news.freetalklive.com. Oh, yeah. I've been getting the uh, Free Talk Live newsletter. It's a nice a, yeah, it's, little touch. It's yeah. new, and it's nice. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so we've been teasing this uh, article here about what kind of government America actually has. This is really interesting. This is the result of a scientific study. uh, At a Princeton University. Now, how scientific a study from the political science department is, I am not really sure. More (laughs) scientific than anybody who's listening has done. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, sure. I mean, but, political science isn't exactly your most uh, what hard science, right? No, it's not. I Speaking mean, as the uh, the PhD here, who is a saloon lab rats in her in the, her thousands, um, <laughs> like you've done real science, right? Like, and you can't really study. Yeah politics the same way but you can do the best you can sure i mean even in so-called hard science opinions do come in but like in things like economics and in things like political science um it it can sometimes be a stretch to call them science even because so much of it is just opinion basically that they kind of try to ex post facto justify or even like the things that they study could be an instance of bias but uh, this seems absolutely right to me when i saw the the (laughs) results though yeah well if it seems right to us then it must be true (laughs) (laughs) we're not biased at all uh so anyway these researchers at princeton martin gillens and benjamin i page crunched some numbers and found that america is in fact drum roll please any guesses you guys know the answer I, so I maybe it's dictatorship it's they actually found it's an oligarchy 
Damn. Now, an oligarchy is a system where power is effectively wielded by a small number of individuals defined by their status called oligarchs. Members of the oligarchy are the rich, the well-connected, and the politically powerful, as well as particularly well-placed individuals in institutions such as banking, finance, and the military. The real, the reality is, is this is all government has ever been. Yeah. It's never been anything but this. Yep. When the kings had their courts, they had to get dukes and uh, you know counts and, and people like that that were influential to be on their side. So, you know, favors would be doled out. It would all be politics and inside the court anyway. It's always been the wealthy and the powerful ruling over everybody you can change the title of the government you can call it a, you can call it communism but <laughs> turns out it's joseph stalin and the people in the politburo that get the good stuff sure. you can call it um you can call it a a, a monarchy but turns out it's king henry the eighth and <laughs> the people in um you know in his court that are running things you can call it a democracy but it turns out it's the the you know the, the people in you know in in a, a true democracy, so like you know, New England towns, it's the uh, city fathers and the families that have been t- in town a long time. Mm-hmm. If it, you can call it a republic, but turns out it's the military-industrial complex, the lobbyists, the the um, you know the the politicians, the family names, the Kennedys, the Bushes, the Clintons. It's always this. Are there is there some changeover? Yes, but that's not democracy. <laughs> Yeah. Now, I mean, I don't think we need a study to tell us this. It seems no. pretty obvious. I mean, that's why it rings no. completely true for me. I didn't study. You know, the only thing I did was look up the term oligarch to be able to define it here on the show, and that's it. Because <laughs> I knew it was true. This yeah. is this is how it's always been. Well, I, and I would argue actually that the U.S., even with the quote unquote founding fathers, has always been an oligarchy. In fact, Jefferson and uh, and Adams would go back and forth saying there's a natural aristocracy. Okay, right. and that in and of itself is an oligarchy. And it was even written in the Constitution, of course, like women couldn't participate in the political process at the beginning, and black people were counted as three fifths of a person. And well, that's not stuff even was codified. Well, the fact is, is if every um, you'd still have some arguable republic if all landowning white males uh, actually had the same level of power, but it's obvious that they don't. Mm-hmm. You know, there's the people that are in, the people that are out, the people who are give their vote away for free stuff or the, you know, to be liked by the right people. It's, it's always this way. Now, you know, I, I'll share a thought, though. I'm very concerned that there are a lot of people who would use the term voluntarist or anarcho-capitalist who would also say... That effectually, you would end up, even if there weren't governments, you would end up being ruled by an oligarchy. Right, um, because it's a natural hierarchy. Yeah, heard, Hans Hermann Hoppe, yeah, he would come right out and say there's natural elites and natural intellectuals. There's people that are just going to end up running the town. This may or may not be true, but the fact is, I don't know yeah, the answer yeah, to this, yeah. and no one else knows the answer to this because it's never been allowed to be tried. Mm. And free people should be able to try this out on their own. Sure. Like I said, I have all kinds of sympathies for the small government minarchists, but I think that other people, this is that my transition from the minarchist type to the voluntarist was I realized if somebody owns a piece of land or large piece of land, they should be able to invite people there, create their own little society and be left alone. And that's what they should be able to do. And that's really the transition. If you think somebody can... Nobody really owns land now because you have to pay rent to the government to keep living there. Indeed. And and that's really, you know, that's a a problem. And that's how it's always been. You know, uh, quit rents Mm -hmm. are what property tax are. Yeah, it's just modern day serfdom, really. Yeah. Quit rents are what the serfs and the um, had to pay to the Lord. And then the Lord would pay some kind of fee to the king. um, And that's how it always went. It's it's no different. It's just different rulers. Yeah, Yeah, I don't think we've ever left feudalism. I've said that plenty of times, even on this show. Uh, It just hasn't happened. Yeah, yeah, it's feudalism with a different hat. Yeah. And you're right, Brian. I think there is a bright line between um, people who might call themselves voluntarists um, but don't really want to abolish all hierarchy. You know, like they're mm-hmm. okay with so-called natural hierarchy. And, you know, I'm not I'm not so sure where I fall in that because if you can opt out, if there's some hierarchical organization, but you don't have to participate in it and you don't, you're not subject to it, it's, all, it's completely voluntary whether you want to be in that organization, then it's probably fine with me. I just wouldn't want to be, have anything to do with it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. 
But a lot of natural hi- so-called natural hierarchies, you can't opt out or you can't opt out easily. Yeah, but I want to bring that up in that to say that oligarchy in and of itself may not be an evil thing in most people's definitions of the word because well, I, I think, think it's, I think it, it, oligarchy it definitely has an evil tinge to it. It just doesn't. Sure. It, its implementation may or may not stink. It, exactly. The, so I the mean, fact is, the governments around the world own their citizens by their very you know founding statements in, right. in many cases. But I'd rather live in the United States than I would like to live in you know Uganda or something like that. Sure. Sure, but I think it's important to bring up because I think a lot of people would hear this article and just go, "Oh my God, we're an oligarchy. This is where we need to get back to a republic." And it's like, "No, no, no. First off, hold on. It's always been an oligarchy. Sec- oligarchy. Yeah, Second no off, nothing to go back to. <laughs> right. Second off, hold on. You may not think that's a bad thing. You, you know what I mean? And <laughs> yeah. and and if so, I agree. As long as it's as long as you can opt out of it, maybe it's not so bad. You know. But I I I, I wonder." I, I think you have to, you know, fundamentally, you have to be able to own land. And that's what it comes down to. If you can't own land, if you have essentially these property taxes as things go, they control you and they decide what you're going to do. Should you have to pay for roads? Absolutely. Should you have to pay for school that you send your kids to? Absolutely. You should have to pay for every service you use. But a property tax is a immoral system for getting that stuff paid for. Yeah, you know, that's interesting that you bring up land ownership as such a key cornerstone of freedom, because I I mean, I pretty much agree with that, right? Like property rights are basically rules for humans to live in a world with scarce resources and minimize conflict, right? This is yours. This is mine. You know, don't aggress on my stuff, man, right? Uh, But there are some people who own like huge amounts of land like sure. there there were land grants back in the days of yore you know there there are still some places in new hampshire actually which are so called unincorporated areas or yeah. land grants and it's basically like some lord or something gave or some po- politician gave a mountain to some guy and it just got passed down through his family yeah. you know, some guy was politically connected so is that legitimate land ownership? Like, and, and all of it was taken from Native Americans who were living on it before. So you really can go down a rabbit hole with it. Although I do really like the idea of property rights. But what do you think? 855-450-3733 here on Free Talk Live, the Sunday show. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $33,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $33,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of 
stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show. It's me, Stephanie, here with you. And Brian. And Mark. And don't forget, you can call us and bring up anything that's on your mind. That is why we call the show Free Talk Live. The phone number to call is 855-450-3733. Or you can also call us on Skype at lrn.fm. Now, and no- you can get a free pound of coffee by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. <laughs> There's a subscription program there for BuzzBox Coffee. Now, BuzzBox is high-end coffee. It's uh, 100% organic, shade-grown top 1% grade Arabica beans. And, you know, you're, you're gonna, it's delicious coffee. There's no doubt about it. You can find delicious coffee um, in your town. You can find shade-grown coffee if you go on the Internet. What you can't find is you can't find an organization that has the commitment to it's uh, the people that produce the coffee. It has commitment to creating a better world in the third world than BuzzBox. BuzzBox has teamed with us to offer 100 micro loans through world vision to people around the world so that they can get that bicycle they need for the delivery business or uh, that sewing machine they need to make shoes for their community so many things and shoes by the way are a big deal clothes you can get for free around Mm -hmm. the world but uh, shoes people wear those things until they wear out yeah that's a good point yeah it's much harder to get shoes so yeah anyway um coffee.freetalklive.com to get a free pound of coffee a pound of coffee that once you try it you'll love and you'll love the way you feel about how you're making the world a better place coffee.freetalklive.com all right Now, we've been talking about this study from Princeton University, the political science department, that found that contrary to popular belief, America is actually an oligarchy, which means that basically the rich and powerful are in charge of the political process. It's ruled by the the elites, the rich and powerful. Of course, this is the way it's always been in human history. And I think it's amusing, um, the idea that we're going, you're going to have a revolution and set something up. Oh, you've changed out the rich and powerful people. (laughs) <laughs> the, the rich people right. mostly stayed rich, or we've created new rich people, and the powerful we have new powerful people, and we, we shouldn't have any problems now. <laughs> right, yeah. I, I think we should point out, too, it's always been this way in the Western world. Uh, I think there's areas maybe where it hasn't always been that way. What the, all, the, the, in popular history, that's like, I mean, the Native Americans didn't have an oligarchy, I don't believe. They probably had powerful people, right? I mean, well, they the, had the they Native had slaves. Americans, there were like thousands of different tribes. Yeah. And a lot of them yeah. were all different, you know, so. Yeah. But yes, I, your, but point, your point stands. Nations. Your point yeah. stands. I just wanted to cut people off the past. They said, well, there was this group, you know. <laughs> There's yeah. always a group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was one group that uh, Magellan uh, encountered that didn't understand what personal property was. You know, let's just, yeah. just oh, right, oh, yeah. it's shiny, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It just didn't, didn't get it. 
that you know right oh I'm that not, isn't going to mesh real well with modern society right now. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah there are there there's interesting case studies uh yeah i mean you know actually there have been anarchist societies where like you kind of could opt out of them there was one in russia in the early 20th century um and of course they ended up getting conquered by you know the revolutions occurring in that day uh but i as far as i know it does seem like that uh, that it, that a natural aristocracy or a natural oligarchy did seem to kind of take hold but i think the interesting case point in that is that the military leader of the time actually gave up being a military leader there after huh. about four years a, re- a regular cincinnatus yeah he just he, he pretty much is like well we, no we don't need a military here you know, and I, of course, then they got conquered. But what's, whatever. What's going to happen is, is if you level the playing field, like think about uh, Castro's Cuba. Most of the wealthy Cubans had to go. They took what they could get, and they got out of the country as quickly as possible when Batista lost uh, to Castro. Um, but you, no one would claim right now that there isn't a party elite, and that these sure. that the, the chairs, you know, the chairs remain the same. Different butts are sitting in them. So what? <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it's just okay. You don't have an oligarchy now. Yes, you do. <laughs> now they call it a revolution. Yeah. Well, you know, we are the revolution. Well, wait a second. What? What? We want a new revolution. Shoot him. You know. Like, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's interesting because do you guys think it's possible to have a human society of whatever size that isn't that doesn't have a culture of like domination and power where some people are ruling over others? Do you think it's truly possible to have a I don't know the answer and nobody knows the answer and you're not going to be able to find the answer unless we let people be free to start yeah. new governmental systems. Yeah. You're not free to do that. Here in the United States, you're free to do whatever you want to do as long as you p- pay us and you follow our zoning ordinances or whatever. Well, why shouldn't I be able to buy 500 acres of land in New Hampshire, tell everybody F off. We're making our own little city here. Yeah. And uh, we're going to, you know, I'm going to draw people here. We're going to do things my way. And we're going to, and as long as we aren't aggressing on anybody else or doing whatever we're doing, why shouldn't we be able to do that? Mm. Oh, well, the town fathers won't let that happen. Sometimes the fathers are mothers. But, um, you know, the, no, no, can't do, can't build that there. No, you can't. You know, no, no, no. We have rules. The answer is no. Oh, you're going to pay us. Yes, then you can. And that's it. We'll take your land away from you if you don't pay property taxes. Yeah. Yeah, I love that question. Um, I think it's possible, but I don't think most people realize just how far you're going to have to explore the human condition to get to the point where that's possible. Because yeah. I think it goes right down to language. And language is also partly thought, you know, because, I mean, you think those words. And there's so many languages across the world, in the Middle East particularly, where the word for woman literally means property. You know, and I think, you know, like like they're part and parcel. It's in the word. And I think that that's a very... You know, if a woman's thinking that, she's thinking she's property. I mean, you, you have hierarchy built into the language. You have domination built into the language. You know, and in I'm Spanish, not, wife sure. means a pair of handcuffs. So let, oh, it, goes, it goes the opposite yeah. direction, too. No, 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 right, right. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I wasn't making a feminist case there. I was just using these. <laughs> right, yeah. It can go both ways. But that's the point, is that it has to go all the way. I mean, how far... How far back you have to go? You even got to, you know, get to the language to to eliminate maybe this domination thing. And, you know, then it's a, if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I, I, when you think about the family um, setup, I mean, we have essentially uh, governments or extensions of families, and you have oh, a whole. Oh, I agree yeah, with this. You have a whole total hierarchical setup. Um, I mean, you know, I'm trying to have conversations with Jack about. Uh, you know what how things operate in the house and i'm setting the rules he's got to operate by my rules and there's really doesn't seem to be any different uh, you know any other way around that um you know he's got to do things at some things my way or else and, and i just don't know what else to do there are some parents who who try to like get outside that but i mean that's not my area of expertise. It just does. I'd seem, love to. I'd love I to hear more coaching on it because yeah. I, I would love to raise, um, you know, a, a little a kid that doesn't have these uh, sort of hierarchical attachments. Yeah. But I haven't heard because he's going to try to dominate all the time. Domination is the way he gets the attention that he needs and wants. And yeah, I mean, this is something like with the language. My son, 
You know, and I'm not saying you're doing anything wrong. You know, I'm, I'm just saying language. that that explore it. That's property. You know, I mean, yeah. like that, like the language in itself is is exploring the idea of property and saying my son, my wife, my, my husband. My if I house, say my yeah. God or my Lord, it isn't though. So I don't know that a possessive no, pronoun then, necessarily indicates yeah, but property. That, that's your God is in ref, is often I think would you would say is is the property is going the other direction where you're saying that he owns you. I mean, you're a slave to Christ, man. That's that's yeah. how it goes. <laughs> you, yeah, you know? there is really deep. My in... equal. <laughs> I, this man is my equal. I don't, I don't know. It's just it, it's a it's a it's a deep question. Yeah, I mean, I think it is possible to get outside of um, the culture of domination, but it definitely takes a lot of conscious thought. Oh yeah. I mean, like you know, Brian and I live together. I think. Our household is something that's pretty close to that, like an, a place that. But is there's expectations, free. right? Like I don't know if he cleans the sink or the toilet or what you know whether who you do, but if if you stop, you know there's going to be some level of sort of domination. Expectations are not being met. No, I don't think there there necessarily has to be. Like so, if okay, let's talk about that. If we had a problem where um, the house was getting messy because so, somebody was said they were going to clean it and then didn't. Mm-hmm. Like, we would probably just talk about it. Hey, did you notice that the toilet's getting dirty? I think it's awesome that's working out, but there are, you know, I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, there are consequences for bad behavior. And if you're going to be the one who enacts those consequences, right? Like, if Brian never cleaned up anything, you're going to be like, exactly, why are you here? You know, like... Well, then I wouldn't, like, be his girlfriend anymore. Right! (laughs) That's the consequence! (laughs) Yeah, but, like, it's... I guess I'm not like if he doesn't clean the house, I'm not saying, well, you didn't clean the toilet today when you said you're going to 30 lashes with a wet noodle. You mm-hmm. know, it's not like that. It's oh, I man. think it's best. Like, I mean, <laughs> he, like he wants to because he wants to have a clean environment and he's motivated from within himself. It's not somebody else subverting his will. You know what I mean? I, I think that half the population only um, only operates by incentives, and sometimes those incentives well, have to be so, thrown in, thrown in their face. Yeah, that's... I don't know. I I can't like like I can't operate in a really messy situation. I mean, we're just using this as an example. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I can't operate well. Like I, I lose functionality, and so it's my own intrinsic need to like want to have a, a clean place. And I actually like. That's okay you if the also other want me to be happy. Exactly and... that too, and and that's another thing that people miss is that I think love in part is when happiness when a when a couple's when or more than that there's their, um, there's more their happiness up. is intertwined. <laughs> there's more coming up here on Free Talk Live the Sunday Show eight fifty five four fifty three. Breathe it in, kid. Clean fresh air thanks to these new air handler filters. They're more energy efficient, hold more dust, and are stronger than ever. And Granger's got over three thousand different styles and sizes to choose from. Just ordered a new batch from Granger.com today. I love oxygen, kid. And this facility's got some great AO2. I'm breathing easier just thinking about these air handler filters. Get some today. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com slash air handler or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Free speech is protected on the internet, right? Not always. Government agencies try to limit free speech and commerce on the net. Luckily, when they do, the Institute for Justice is there to defend your First Amendment right to free speech. IJ helped set the first federal precedent for internet free speech in 1999, and ever since has worked to prevent unconstitutional roadblocks in cyberspace. Visit our website today at ij.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, April 20th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.64 per ounce. Gold is worth $1,295 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $502. Antiwar.com reports a U.S. drone attacked a highway in Yemen's southeastern Beida province, killing at least 21 people, including a number of civilian bystanders and wounding many more. The strike targeted a pickup truck carrying 16 people and was apparently a signature strike on the assumption the truck was carrying al-Qaeda. Though none of the slain were identified, reports dubbed all 16 people in the truck as suspected militants. The other five slain and six wounded in the strike were in other nearby cars, and there wasn't even a pretext of suspicion about them at all, all labeled civilian bystanders who just happened to be in the line of fire. Yemen's government reported the attack as targeting unnamed senior al-Qaeda fighters, but offered no additional details. It is the seventh U.S. drone strike against Yemen in two months. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. The Salt Lake Tribune reports lawmakers and county commissioners from western states at Utah's capital on Friday said it's time for western states to take control of federal lands within their borders. More than 50 political leaders from nine states convened for the first time to talk about their joint goal, taking control of oil, timber, and mineral-rich lands away from the feds. Utah House Speaker Becky Lockhart was flanked by a dozen participants, including her counterparts from Idaho and Montana, during a press conference after the day-long closed-door summit. New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, Wyoming, Oregon, and Washington also had representatives. Lockhart said the summit was in the work before the standoff between Nevada rancher Cliven Bundy and the Bureau of Land Management over cattle grazing earlier this month, adding, what's happened in Nevada is really just a symptom of a much larger problem. You've heard of ShinyBadges.com, but you need to check out the New Causes tab. Every item in that section includes a donation to a worthy liberty project like Hooding the Homeless. So go to ShinyBadges.com, click on the New Causes tab, and get yourself a quality product that not only supports the cause you believe in, but starts a conversation with your neighbors. Plus, get a free gift when you pay with Bitcoin at ShinyBadges.com. Ballot Access News reports on several interesting election stories. On March 29th, the voters of Slovakia elected Andrzej Kiska as their president. He is not a member of any political party, and his campaign slogan had been the first independent president. The election was held on March 15th, with a runoff on March 29th because no one received a majority vote in the initial election. Fourteen candidates had been on the March 15th ballot. They qualified by submitting 15,000 signatures. In the runoff, Kiska defeated the nation's sitting prime minister. On April 9th, Nebraska Governor Dave Heineman signed LB1048, which lets a qualified party dissolve itself. This bill came into existence because Americans elect had qualified in Nebraska, but is no longer functional. Because Nebraska lets parties remain on the ballot for two election cycles after a successful petition, without this bill, Americans elect would still be ballot qualified in 2014. And on April 17th, the New Hampshire Senate defeated HB 1322 by a party line vote of 13 to 11, with all Republicans supporting the defeat of the bill. The bill would have eased the definition of a political party from a group that had polled 4% for either governor or U.S. senator at the last election to 3%. That same day, the Senate passed HB 1542, which had been introduced at the request of the Secretary of State, Bill Gardner, and makes it illegal for a group to circulate a petition in the year before the election. Federal courts in Rhode Island and Arkansas have ruled that it is unconstitutional to tell a group that it cannot circulate a petition for party status during an odd year. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
Today's most popular video games take place in dangerous post-apocalyptic landscapes. But are these games doing enough to prepare our kids for the actual post-apocalyptic future we will all soon face? Well, I think these games are quite effective at teaching our kids skills like finding shotgun ammo and leading elite squads of super soldiers. But these aren't the advanced skills that they're going to need. They're that going to need the more practical skills like You're how to find drinking water by collecting the morning dew and human yes, skulls. Or, or how to deal with depression when the sun is blocked out for 500 years by a cloud of radioactive Absolutely. dust. Absolutely. Now, that's the type of knowledge these kids are going to need when their world has been turned into a brutal hellscape. But these kids said that they know how to find items to barter at weapon shops and how to use medicine packs to heal zombie bites. The games make it all seem deceptively simple. I mean, in the future, a kid's not going to be able to kill a six-foot-long irradiated beetle just by pressing a few Absolutely. buttons, and he's well, going to have to get down there with an axe and hack and hack but and hack. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. It is the live Sunday night edition, and we're starting off the second hour of tonight's show. With you, it's Stephanie. And Osiris. Uh, I mean, Brian. <laughs> and Mark. Wow, we've got a real live Egyptian god on our hands, huh? Well, hey, it's it's uh, the, the, the day of, of my wife, Ishtar, or Isis, or whatever they call it. The Have name. you risen from the dead? Uh, no, uh, actually, Ishtar did that. Oh. A <laughs> few times. See, I don't even She even know got my... hung by a meat hook. Yuck. Just like a cross, yeah, actually. Might as well be nails, meat, hook, all the same. Oddly similar, huh? Yeah, oddly. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> a lot of these stories seem to recycle. If you want to call us and uh, recycle a story, or if you want to bring up something completely new, you can do that. That is why we call the show Free Talk Live. And, of course, we are live this Ishtar Sunday night. <laughs> you can call us at 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three, or but on I Skype, think that LRN.FM. The idea of rebirth is something that has gone on. I mean, this this is what Easter is really about: new life, rebirth. Um, and I think that's fascinating that uh, you know that that same um, story has just this thousand millennia of of momentum. And you know, it doesn't matter to me the names and the names can change or whatever. But that's you know, I mean, it's neat. You know, you can ch- you can change. Your life can be new tomorrow if that's what you want. It's exi- that's available to you. Yeah, that's an interesting idea because if you're constantly just being born again, you know what I'm like. Okay, you so, shouldn't do it over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> well, but how many times is it appropriate to do that? How many do overs do you get? Um, I don't know, but uh, I suppose as many as you need to get it right. But you should keep trying to get it right. <laughs> I, I think it's the message should be: don't be a slave to your past. You know, I think that's a that's a good one. Right. Yeah. You're not entirely the sum total of the things that happened to you in the past. You can choose to be differently. Right. You yeah. can choose that something's going to be different. Those things are still going to affect you, but um, you can choose that, that that's different. And that's really freeing for a lot of people because bad things happen in your past that, mm. you know, may or may not be your fault. And Sure, but I see an element of denial in it sometimes. Yes. Like, sure. like, you know, these some people claim to be born again virgins. Are you serious? You're telling me you're a born-again virgin? I suppose you could have that for yourself. I don't know what it means. I mean, no, no, no. Uh, and, you know, like, I don't know why you want virginity, exactly. I mean, like that would be the question that I would... That, I don't care if you want... If you can born ag- be a born-again virgin, that's fine. But what did you want it for? Yep. And um, if, As if somehow virginity is some special... I don't know. Is right. it wrapped around guilt in yes. some way? And oh, I think it's absolutely wrapped around If it's wrapped around guilt, around guilt but you like need to, to ask yourself why. But being in denial about something that you feel guilty about um, isn't always healthy. You know, like, there are, again, there are born-again Christians who are like, well, you know, I used to smoke crack and I ran over a few people in my car and... But now I'm a born again Christian, so everything's fine. I don't know? think that that in and of itself for me isn't a, a particularly good explanation. But if something bad's happened in your life and you've turned around the way you behave, then uh, I mean this this idea of redemption is another idea that has this millennia of of momentum behind mm-hmm. it. People want to offer redemption. People want to offer mercy to somebody who's uh, changed their life. And sure, I found yeah. that being a convicted felon that. 
when I tell that story to people, it's very few. It's a very small percentage of the population that simply won't let me get um, get past that. And that's fine. That they, they can have that too. And usually it speaks more about them than it does about me, to my mind. Sure. But, you know. I just think that if you try to, like move on and like forget about something and sweep it under the rug without actually processing what happened then you're probably going to be repeating that thing over and over it's called repetition compulsion i wouldn't doubt that that's the case you need to you know yeah definitely process things well we have a special call on the line from saint james he's actually calling james directly from paradise so we have a line to heaven hello saint james good day to you you are on free talk live the sunday show St. James? Uh, Mark. Yes. Hi, Mark. Once when I first heard about you being a convicted felon, Mm -hmm. I I prejudged you, and it just so happened to be uh, that I was going to tell your call screener, not knowing anything about the crime you had committed, that I bet it's a drug deal gone awry, and bingo, I... Almost immediately found out that to be the case when I was put on hold. I didn't say that to the call screener. Now, this isn't St. James. This is Wit. Well, Wit's... Um, uh, My given name is James. Is James. I don't... You will call me James, please. <laughs> I, uh, I guess I, I have no choice. Huh? <laughs> no, Mark, I'd also made a... Pre- pre- I prefer to be re- referred to as James. Big Daddy Rhino Schwantz. Yeah. I don't really want to talk to you, James, so I'm going to just end that call right now. <laughs> Everybody wants to hang up on poor Wit. <laughs> oh yeah, he's abused. He's oppressed. Yeah, get over it. Well, <laughs> he does. He has a bit of a complex in that in that arena. Yeah, he has to wait until I'm there See, in the uh, first chair, and then he can get he gets a full segment. <laughs> I, I was actually hoping that would be like an entertaining crank call. It might have been. I don't know. Yeah, I guess he, we'll... he really pushed your buttons with the "you will call me James" yeah, thing. I know. I will hang up on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to talk now with uh, Temper. I think who's on the line on Skype. Hey, Temper, you're on Free Talk Live. Turn off the audio on your radio, thing, there, yeah. Temper. <laughs> well, I think I'm having some sort of problem here. Okay, what's can on you your guys mind? Hear me well. I can hear you just yeah. fine. Yes. Well, you guys were talking about kids and, like, the authoritarian nature of parenting. Yes. Um, I think what what happens is, I mean, I mean, it's a necessity because the previous generation cr- kind of created the world, for lack of a better terminology. So it's their job to kind of teach what they created to their children. But what most parents that – and this is what I found – most parents forget is it's kind of the child's job to teach the adult or the parent actually what really was created. Like, you know, I don't find it magical that the younger generations are the ones that are the the libertarians and they're challenging, you know, these notions of the state and especially like speeding laws and, um, you know, uh, drug laws and that kind of stuff. Well, the baby, the baby boomers, they had their, um, you know, the, the flower child thing that they did. Um, and you know, each generation has its, uh, you know, its little sort of cultural revolution. I think that this gener that politics and at least in America, I don't know around the rest of the world is, is turning more libertarian and there's, you know, that's inexorable. It seems to me, um, and I find that, uh, you know, fascinating. I sort of have looked at the uh, the rise of socialism as an idea in the early, and uh, excuse me, in the late 19th century, just to sort of get some clues as to what might happen. But there's some differences because socialism feeds the state and centralized power. And so the people that want centralized power can pump your money into it and, and change that. Whereas this is libertarianism is in, in it's, it's grassroots in a different way. Um. I don't I don't know that I 100% agree with you. I, I mean, ideally, I guess you're right. But, I mean, ideally, I, I think that the Constitution was supposed to create a, a different kind of republic. Um, ideally, um, th- I think the same thing that corrupts, uh, is, say, like a – an honest king or a, a, an honest republic or – I mean – the same forces that corrupt those would just uh, corrupt a, an anarchy system, a lack of system as well. I mean, like, for example, I've. No I've way to debated, know. I haven't well, tried I've it. De- 
I've debated on um, freetalklive.com and the, the forums there. I'm sure you felt very uh, fulfilled after you're done. <laughs> well, one of the things I debated yeah. was that the the topic that you brought up one day about drunk driving, and one of the replies was that that is aggression, so it's a violation of NAP. So when you drive drunk, that's aggression. It was the claim. And that, I bring that up because with that kind of line of thinking, I mean, you can say anything's aggression. Uh, any act that you don't you don't uh, deem uh, appropriate is then aggression. I, I wonder to myself, is negligence aggression? I think that there's, um, you know, it, it really depends on one's view of aggression. If I gave I a think- chimpanzee liquor and a handgun, like I might be a, you know, I might be responsible for some of the things it does. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sympathetic to the idea that intent or those circumstances doesn't matter. It just matters if someone gets hurt. But let's explore that more in moments here on Free Talk Live, the Sunday edition. 855-450-3733 is our number if you have thoughts. Stay tuned. If you've got a 401k, IRA, or pension plan, I've got some really bad news for you. The IRS wants you to think these qualified plans are the best way to save for retirement. They give you a tax break when you contribute. Sounds good, right? Wrong. A qualified plan could be a tax disaster when you retire. With $17 trillion in debt, taxes are already going up. Imagine paying a top tax rate of 94% like the 1940s. There is a better way. It's an alternative the ultra-rich use that beats the pants off your IRA or 401k. It's been around for years. Your money grows tax-deferred, has no taxes in retirement, and no income taxes when you die. Plus, you can grow your money potentially double digits with no risk of losing money when the market crashes. If the market tanks like 2008, you lose nothing. Call 800-488-1677 now to get a free copy of my Inc. magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, to protect yourself from taxes and crashes. Just cover shipping and handling. The next 37 callers get a free trial to the Millionaire Black Box. 1-800-488-1677. Call 1-800-488-1677. 1-800-488-1677. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. According to Health News, doctors at Johns Hopkins Medical School have discovered that bones are the coolest part of the body. A 10-year study found that although the body has many cool things in it, nothing is cooler than your skeleton. Just think about it. You have this soft, fleshy body, but inside of it, there's a second, tinier body that's made out of a super hard rock. Our data is conclusive. Bones are very, very cool. To conduct the study, researchers examined every single body part and determined how cool or uncool it was. We initially thought the brain might be the coolest part because it's like a computer that runs on food. But when we looked at it up close, it was all gross and wrinkled. Brains are not cool. Bones are cool. Doctors discovered that there are big, strong bones like baseball bats in your arms and legs, hand bones that look like a monster claw, and skull bones that make a scary face. Doctors did caution that as cool as human bones are, they're not nearly as cool as dinosaur bones. This is the Onion News Network. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? 
For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're listening to the live Sunday edition. It's Stephanie with you tonight. And Brian. And Mark. And you can call us here on Free Talk Live, where you can call and bring up anything that's on your mind at 855-450-3733. So you can go to blockchain.info and get the best online wallet. That's blockchain.info. And it is the wallet is encrypted right in your browser. They never have access to your Bitcoins. Um, so it's safe, much safer than many of the uh, wallets that are at these exchanges and that sort of thing. If that exchange goes down, a la Mt. Gox, you lose your Bitcoins. At blockchain.info, that can't happen. You have a backup. You can get your coins without ever. What, if blockchain disappears tomorrow, you can get your coins out of your wallet. Also, they got some great merchants. You have your key backed up. Yeah, well, you should. Mm-hmm. You need you need to do that. Yeah, yeah. Important to know though. <laughs> they but they send obvious. that to you as soon as you. Um, they make it pretty easy to do yeah, too. That's right. The, and and they have tools to make it about as easy as anybody can possibly make it. Yes. Um, of their blockchain.info and they have great merchant tools that they're rolling out at blockchain.com. I need to explore that a bit more, Brian. I wish you would too, so that you can we can talk intelligently about it. Absolutely. But uh, there's really some really great stuff coming down the pipe. Blockchain.com. Done. It's a cliffhanger. Well, it's <laughs> it sounded very I dramatic. Mean, I, I, I just don't. I, I can't. I can't speak intelligently about it. I haven't done the the research enough to know exactly what's going on. But I need to, and I want to yeah. share it with my audience. Soon. At the the conferences we were attending, I heard uh, uh, Nick, who is the the head of of blockchain, he was saying that uh, he's got some really really slick UI improvements, user interface improvements, and that's really what it's all about for adoption. I think is can the person just look at it and say, I know what I want to do, yeah. and they're doing their best to make that happen. So good for them. All right, let's go to Skype and talk to Temper again. He's still on the line with us. Hey, Temper. Hey, how's it going? Good. So uh, what, we, where did we leave off? At we were the talking about parents and uh, domination conversations. I think it was about what is drunk driving uh, oh, a violation a of the aggression? non-aggression principle. Yeah. I, I was, just to finish my thought, I think at the very end of last segment, I was saying that I don't think intent really matters because, like, if you run someone over with a car... It doesn't matter if you didn't mean to. That person has still been hurt. And that's the essence of a, a, a crime or a wrong is that it has a victim and something was taken away from the victim or done to the victim. And um, then they need to be made whole from that, right? So I think it there's doesn't a, matter if you do it accidentally or not. I feel like there's a difference. I really do. I mean, if, if somebody, uh, you know... <laughs> takes my kid and chops him up into little pieces and uh, eats him. Um, You know, it's the same as if they, if he runs out in the street and he gets killed. Um, You know, I mean, that's not something you could really do by accident. Right. That's the thing is, is that there's a different, you know, there's intent matters to some extent to me. And I think it's sort of a punitive in a punitive way. Well, if we're trying to determine if intent matters, we should look at something that could either be done accidentally or not. Mm -hmm. You know, like running someone over with a car. Yeah, sure. I gave that example. If you run somebody over intentionally with a car, I've got a much bigger problem with you than if you did it accidentally. And. Oftentimes, when it comes to cars, why? Are, what are people doing in the middle of the road? I mean, did did you have a did you have a, a stroke and your car veered off to the side and you hit somebody who was um, on the the sidewalk where they were completely legitimately supposed to be? If so, are you responsible because you mm-hmm. had a stroke? Uh, how much or, time should you spend in prison for that? More importantly, what about kind of unrelated factors like, uh, let's say the speed limit's twenty five? You know, if if you know, a kid got accidentally ran over, and the guy was going twenty twenty five. You're you're less apt to get angry, um, and more apt to get angry angry if uh, the person was going say fifty or a hundred. But if you really think about the 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 problem at hand, I mean, um, you know, you had a kid that ran out in the street. If if the person would have been going fifty five instead of fifty, they would have passed 
before the kid ran out in the street. So, but then, then it's just the end result that matters. Like, how bad did the kid get hurt if he got hurt? You know what I mean? It doesn't really matter how fast the person was driving. It just matters, did someone get hurt and how badly? I yeah, think. but but there's a there's a threshold on every parameter where it becomes kind of like this um, common judgment, I would say, where, like people will will judge other people's speeds like you know if if you're driving five over you might consider that safe but some guy passes you 10 miles an hour faster you he's say, a he's lunatic a man- yeah he's a maniac <laughs> and so you you everybody does this they kind of judge somebody's behavior so if somebody's doing a behavior that you judge inappropriate and then something bad happens that's when they feel like they have uh, some sort of moral imperative that they can punish that person. When, I mean, I think intent matters more than anything. I mean, if 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 you intended to get behind that wheel and not pay attention for whatever reason, then, yeah, you're not a good driver. I don't know what should happen to you, but maybe you shouldn't be driving. Well, what if you um, intend to get behind the wheel and murder someone and you miss or you screw up or your car doesn't start or whatever? Should you still be punished for that? No well, one's yeah. been hurt. How far yeah. have you missed by? Um, <laughs> because if you miss by a, a hair's breadth, I, I, like I think that there's um, – I, I, I've used this example with Ian while you guys were on vacation. Is, is If I've got a revolver and I run around with no bullets in the chamber mm-hmm. and I run around with that revolver just clicking it at people's heads mm. – I haven't caused any harm, yep. but I really am a problem. You know well, what I mean? You, I think you could argue that you have caused psychological harm because you've threatened them, and it's, they don't know that there's no bullet in there, so they're very scared. And Somebody has psychological harm because they had a diesel pass them instead of a uh, regular car. My God, I've breathed in too much of that black stuff. You know, I mean, okay, well, what if who the knows? Pers- what if the person has a heart attack because they're scared? Did you kill them, or did they just die? I, I think that I, I think that in that case, you can certainly make the argument that that would be a cause of of that. But I also want people have people get scared all the time and they have heart attacks all the time. My grandmother, she was 90 um, great grandmother. Excuse me. She was uh, 90 something years old. I asked her if she wanted a root beer popsicle. I haven't seen a root beer pops, popsicle in a long time, by the way. Um, <laughs> and she said yes. And she had a heart attack shortly thereafter. I kind of believed wow, as sorry, a kid that. Just... that that was, you know, like th- this was a sort of a trigger. I have no clue whether oh, it was or not. And the best yeah. thing to think is, no, it wasn't. Yeah. Something had to happen before she had a heart yeah. attack. So, you know, who knows? I, I think the key here is more in not not necessarily like how does this violate the NAP, blah, blah, blah. More about like what exactly, how is rest, restorative justice enacted? How exactly, what exactly is restoration, that what restoration can be involved? Yeah. And like what does that take, how does that take shape? I think that's more the thing to explore is what exactly do you do about restoration? Because then, you know... It, because if, the it, NAP is very focused, or the non-aggression principle is very focused on punishing people. Like, oh, you broke the non-aggression principle, you should be punished, right? Bad boy. But right. like, if we're thinking more of restoring what was taken from or done to the victim, then there has to be a victim. They have to have had some harm done to them, and they have to be compensated, you know, commensurate to what was done to them. Yeah. So I like that system better. But uh, temper any last thoughts? I don't have time for any last thoughts. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe Great you better question. call us back tomorrow night. Thank you for calling in tonight. This is Free Talk Live, the Sunday show, 855-450-3733. In crimes, does intent matter? Or is it all about uh, the victim and what was done to them? What do you think? Free Talk Live. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia and metabolic complex, and pro-metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and Warwood Plus complex. 
plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes all on sale for spring at herbalhealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to herbalhealer.com and click on spring specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme. M E M E. Helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme. Your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show. The reason we call Free Talk Live is you can call in about anything. Open phone show. The number to call in is 855-450-3733 or on Skype at LRN. .fm. So I told you in the last segment, the best online wallet at blockchain.info. This segment, I'm going to tell you how to get some bitcoins. You can go to cashintocoins.com and they make it easy for you. Um, the instructions there are clear safe it's uh, the, the the service is safe fast legal by the way they have their um msb license they're a licensed money 
business MSB. What does what the heck does that stand for? Is it money money services business? Money services business. What I want to know is who did they have to um, <clears throat> get friendly with to uh, have that happen? <laughs> I, I don't know. They're, they're just uh, you know for whatever that was the the, the claim there. I think they have their uh, their the information online, so you can go check mm. it out. Um, but you have to have one of those in all fifty states. So usually, what they do is work with some bank who already has it in all fifty yes. states. And so maybe that's what happened. Indeed. So go cash into coins dot com. They got great rates over there. As a matter of fact, if you any order under forty dollars, um, you there's no fee. You can use a money order, check, wire transfer, cash into coins dot com. All right, let's go to the phones. We do have a couple of calls on the line. Roger is listening in Iowa. Hi, Roger. You're on Free Talk Live. Hi, Stephanie, Mark, and Brian. Say, I was just cruising across Interstate 80 in Iowa, and I uh, hit Stan, and, and there you guys were. Uh, cool. By Welcome. the way, it's St. Roger. It's St. Roger, but you can call me Roger. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, Stephanie, you said something about uh, the three-fifths clause earlier, mm -hmm. and I was wondering if, if you could expand on, 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 on what you think that three-fifths clause was for. Huh. That's an interesting question. I don't think I've ever thought about the potential hidden motivations of it. But what you're taught in school is that, um, you know, there were all these southern states and they wanted to have uh, people, you know, masses of people to count voting um, power as far as, yeah, basically voting power, which would translate into representatives in Congress. And they said, well, what are we going to do about all these slaves? And let's, you know, they're they're obviously not the same as a white person, so let's count them as three-fifths of a person, so three out of every five counted or whatever for representation purposes. But as far as other yeah. other reasons that might have been in there, I haven't really thought about that. No, I, I when you said it, I, I, I guess I took it out of, uh, uh, maybe you didn't tell me what you just told me, um, but the average person going down the road that don't, don't know any history about it, uh, a lot of people think that it's just, just, just the white man wanted to put that in there to make them less of a person. And mm -hmm. it was all about voting. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the abolitionists in the North wanted to limit the Southern uh, numbers so that they couldn't be overwhelmed, you know, in, in time. And which, which was a good idea, I believe. Um, it, it was one step closer to get that, you know, uh, abolished altogether. Um, also, I stumbled across something here a few days ago that kind of shocked me about the uh, history uh, of uh, when slavery actually got going and, and what was behind that. Mm -hmm. And without going into a long uh, history of it, if you just Google Anthony Johnson, slave owner, I think you'll be surprised. Anthony who? Anthony, Anthony Johnson. Okay. So, Slave I think he, yeah, I think he was like the first uh, black slave owner or something like that. Isn't that right? He was. Mm -hmm. He was. And, yeah, the blacks and, owned and, slaves. And, 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 yeah. They did in Africa, too. There were African yeah. kings who had slaves. Well, who were slavery black. is, um, you know, this this idea that has gone back as far as uh, recorded history. Yeah. And I'm and certain in, hard, in farther than that. most places in the world, as I understand it, it ended sort of on its own without having to fight Chattel war. Chattel slavery did, but I would contend that citizenship is still slavery. Yeah. I mean, if, oh, a, certainly. if a government can claim a portion of your land, uh, can claim a tax on your land and claim a tax on your labor, I mean, what are you? But, uh, you know, they're, they're tax livestock. That's right. Mm. Absolutely right. Uh, can I say one more thing? Sure. You guys got a great show. Thanks. Oh, thank you so much, Roger. I appreciate your call tonight. And yeah, sometimes we don't have time to fully explain or flesh out everything that we say. So I always appreciate it when someone calls in and said, well, you know, that that wasn't quite clear. Let's get into that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see how many angels can dance on the head of a pen. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, every state wants to count as many living, breathing uh, individuals in that state in order to have more power um, in the, the federal government. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, I, I don't know why they were so concerned about voting. Maybe they didn't realize that voting Voting barely matters too much, you know. Well, the smaller the pool, the more the vote matters. I mean, if there's yeah. the three of us in here and we're deciding on what's for dinner, and I say pizza and you guys say ribs, um, then we're having ribs because that's the way it is. Uh, <laughs> Why I can't, can't everybody just have their own dinner exactly what they want? Yeah, and well, that's really the problem is <laughs> is that more freedom makes for a better society, but those that centralize power and benefit from centralized power just don't want you to have your pizza. Indeed. Let's talk to Bill. He's listening in Village Ridge, Montana. Is that right? Hi, Bill. You're on Free Talk Live. 
Hi, no, Villa Ridge, Missouri. Villa Ridge, Missouri. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> What's on your mind? No, that's fine. I just tuned you guys in. I listen to KTGO all the time, and I just heard your show tonight, and it's like uh, I got to call in on your first hour about fairness and how people rich and poor and all this. You know, that's what all we want is to be fair. And when you sit there and you look at a Congress and a Senate that has the insight to know on insider training in Wall Street before it actually happens, hmm. um, you know, it's just kind of wrong that, you know, they have all the perks and all the things going on. Yeah. And we and we have to sit here and figure out what we want to invest in or what we're wanting to do. And they can just call their broker and say, hey, I hear this is going to go up tomorrow at 1030 in the afternoon or morning. So go ahead and buy some shares on it now. Mm. Yeah. Wouldn't and, you like to be their broker? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, all their brothers and mothers and sisters get to know this. I mean, sure. You know, fair, it's really there's a. Is, there's a different set of rules for some people, and, you know, the rules mainly apply to us, and there's very severe penalties if we break them, even if we don't agree with them, but they don't really apply to the the rich and powerful, Ever. the oligarchs. Well, but I wouldn't say rich and powerful. I don't mind Bill Gates. I don't mind uh, the person who ran Apple. I don't mind Steve, uh, Steve uh, Jobs. I can't think of his last name. I don't mind any of them people. I don't mind somebody who owns a, re- a restaurant. And has a pizza shop and then opens up a second and a third and a ninth and a tenth. You're talking about productive rich. Um, yeah. Okay, so there's right. there's a difference between productive rich and uh, the, this, this parasite class. Yeah. And so well, th- there's different I, types of rich, and let's let's talk about them real quick. There's people who get rich, like you're talking about, with using the government in whatever way, shape, or form they use the government, insider deals or whatever, to get wealthy. There are people that produce something and you know made made other people's lives better, and then those 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 that are born into it. Um, the people that use the government are evil the people that create something are saints and the people that are born into it are generally just disdained by uh those the rest of us um i don't know why but they are it's like chelsea clinton here she is walking in new york streets which i can't believe she actually said it but she's walking down new york and she sees this building she likes to uh walk in and she buys an 11 million dollar apartment up there or a house wow. or whatever you want to call them things and it's like <clears throat> you know she hasn't done a darn thing in life to earn even minimum wage for anything. And here she is. She's got $11 million to put down. Mm. And all the Democrats do is scream about the rich and the famous and the, and the, and the you know, offspring getting everything. Oh, and yeah. That's a laugh. <laughs> They've got the same yeah. thing going on. Totally. And, and by the way, when it comes to the offspring getting things, when you're talking about the, the death tax, as it were, the fact is that wealthy people, they know how to use trusts and these kind of things to get around this stuff. It's the middle class that loses um, everything to the, the estate tax mm-hmm. in, in many cases. Well, and if you, you know, if you really think about it, they got a new way you can do your death tax now kind of sick but you know if you if you want to you can go out and marry anybody you want boy or girl and then the money goes to them hey i don't care if it's your next door neighbor or your aunt or your uncle i mean you can they got away you can get away get around this estate tax sure. yeah but most of us and want to give our money to our children yeah, right. <laughs> well hey you know if you, if you got a son and he's over 18 nothing wrong with having a party and saying come on over everybody <laughs> and have a party and both of you go home. Thanks, Bill. This is Free Talk Live, <laughs> the right. Sunday show. It's 855-450-3733. treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Inventory isn't about products, kid. It's about money. Products sitting on shelves is money sitting on shelves. I hate overstock. I hate understock. I hate wasting time. I hate wasting money. That's why I love Granger. Granger Keep Stock Solutions help us manage our facility's inventory so we have exactly what we need when we need it. No more, no less. It's inventory management my way. Get it? Got it? Good. Visit Granger.com slash KeepStock for more information. Granger, for the ones who get it done. It's hard to imagine when things are going reasonably well, just how quickly things can change. But what would it take? Economic collapse? 
massive crop failure, chemical or biological attack. So many situations could find you in the grocery looking to pick up food for your family only to find that the shelves are empty. There's nothing. Don't let that happen. Act today to make sure that if it ever comes to that, you and your family will be provided for. Visit FreezeDryGuy.com to look at the wide variety of survival foods available. Freeze-dried foods from the Freeze-Dry Guy store longer, rehydrate faster, are nutritionally superior to, and taste better than any other long-term storage food available. Visit FreezeDryGuy.com or call toll-free 866 404 FreezeDryGuy.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you got to keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show. Yes, we are live on this Easter Ishtar Sunday. Thank you. <laughs> it's Stephanie with you. And Brian. And Mark. You can go get archives of Free Talk Live for free at archives.freetalklive.com. We've got the last seven days of the show right on the front page at freetalklive.com. But you can get years and years worth of the show back at archive.freetalklive.com. And most most shows, they they charge you for this. We don't. It's free. Archives. Thousands of hours of content. That's pretty good. That's right. If you've got a long commute, you uh, you know, you need something to listen to while you're working out, we've got it. Archives.freetalklive.com. All right. Well, Free Talk Live is a show where you can call in with your thoughts, anything that's on your mind, at 855-450-3733. We have been discussing this article about uh, America's government actually being an oligarchy, which means rule by the kind of rich and powerful not a democracy or a republic like you may have been told. Um, but we do have actually have a couple of calls on the line that I would like to get to. So let's talk first with Paul listening in Asheville, North Carolina. Hey, Paul, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Call in with a little bit of additional clarity regarding the three-fifths compromise. Okay. You, you, all, you all said a few things made me wonder if, if you maybe weren't there yet, it wasn't about who could vote, but no. about how people were counted for the purpose of apportioning Congress. Correct. In other words, how many how many representatives in Congress a given state would have. Right. The right. northern states wanted slaves not to be counted at all. Right. And the 
Southern states, of course, one of them counted 100%. Mm -hmm. So the compromise was actually a little bit better for the demise of slavery than counting them as whole people would have been. But the way this story is often portrayed was that it was an act of disrespect toward the slaves, which is, it, as I read the facts, certainly not true. No, I don't think it is particularly. Um, you can certainly make the argument that the natives people, um, in, you know, right in that same clause is, well, they don't get it. They don't get counted at all. And uh, certainly the government had a lot to do with them. I think that uh, it was far, far bigger diminishment of, of Native Americans than it was of anybody else. But... I, you know, none of this makes any sense to me. If you're going to apportion Congress and only let a certain amount of people vote, it should only be the white male landowners that get counted. Well, okay, we're, we're mixing we're mixing two different issues here, though. I don't it's think so. The issue of, no, it is. You, we, on one hand, we have the issue of who is counted for the purpose of apportioning Congress. Right. And That's what I'm talking hand, about. On the other. And on the other hand, we have the issue of who is allowed to vote. Why would now, you count anything but voters? I'm not talking about what I would do. I'm talking about what was done. I understand and the fact that. that we have, we right. have None of it makes any sense issues. to me. I, I understand, and I, I was clear well, on that from the beginning. Um, and what I'm okay. just saying, so, so, <laughs> I'm just sort of saying, you know, that doesn't make any sense. Do you think it makes any sense? Uh, in a way, it does. Okay. You know, because, uh, again, we have the issue of we're representing, we're, we're putting one per person in the House of Representatives per so many people in a given state, as opposed to the other question of who can vote or cannot vote. Because, you know, it wasn't, is, is it the job of Congress to simply represent people who vote? I would say not. Well, apparently it's the job to it's, represent the moneyed interests, but, um, you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is in reality. Certainly in some cases, in some cases that certainly winds up to be the case. I would argue that in many cases it is not. I certainly want to believe that we have people in Congress that are attempting to do the best they can for their constituents. How many do you think and it I is? Certainly yeah, I'm curious. Too. Running. Oh, gosh, that's... Who, who knows that? Right. I mean, you know, I, I can, I'm thinking I it's think sub of... single digits is well, what I'm guessing. This study that was the an impetus for this original discussion about the Constitution, um, this study done by Princeton University found that actually people's opinion literally doesn't matter at all. <laughs> like if they're not part of the oligarchy, they said in this paper, the preferences of the average American appear to have only a minuscule, near zero, statistically non-significant impact upon public policy. And, yeah, that okay. that resonates I with me. Argue, <laughs> I, I would argue that that is because we let it be so. Who's we? You know, how many people actually, we people in general, how That's... many people actually let, how many people actually participate in the process or attempt to do so? I do, but it doesn't you know, seem to make a difference. I mean... Well, it depends on how many of us do it. Isn't that kind my, of blaming the victim? This, no, not at all. If you don't go to work, whose fault is it that you're broke? Well, yeah, if you I don't, don't go, go to if right, I work, you I get paid money individually. Right. Don't, 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 don't paint yourself a victim because you don't go to work and you're broke. Don't paint yourself a but victim. But I do vote. The That's the thing. Right, and well, I agreed, I'm a, I'm I agreed to work at that place. I didn't consent to the whole system of, oh, well, you have to spend all your time unpaid, you know, lobbying Congress to maybe get some min minuscule and gain in freedom. <laughs> look, furthermore, I, I, I voted, I've run this. for office, Little. and nothing makes a difference. Well, you know, then you're, then you're, you're done. You're just not if trying hard enough, you Mark. Can't do anything, then, then you can't. Right? But my theory is <laughs> Go ahead. that if everybody in this country involve themselves in the process. If everybody in this country let their elected representatives, and what is their first and and primary objective? It's to get reelected, right? If everybody in this country was communicating regularly with their elected representatives, you could not buy a vote in D.C. with a suitcase full of money. I think you're absolutely wrong. The uh, fact is that Australia... percent of the time. Australia and... has a mandated vote, and, the, you know, moneyed interests and lobbyists have just as much power there as they do here. 
a mandated vote. I didn't say anything about voting, did I? It's a hundred percent. I did not say. I did not say if everybody went out and vote, voted, did I? Um, you said involved themselves, but so I mean, how, how involved much, can you get? How much time should we have to? How much time should we be required to spend? How much? However much it takes, and the more of us are spending the time, the less of, the less time each of us have to spend to do it. I, I just think that this is an unworkable because solution. Yeah, I think so Because I can too. only control well, one body. I've got one living and breathing eating. life, and I have spent way too much okay. of it on lying, stinking, slimy politicians in Washington, D.C., yes. and I haven't changed anything doing it. Mm-hmm. I say what we should do is saw Washington, D.C. off, let it float out into the Atlantic Ocean, and then start over. And then, and, and depend on some non-aggression principle where we play games like defining drunk driving as aggression? Well, I think that that's people talking about minutia. Um, but, I mean, don't you think that, that people should have personal responsibility, own property? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I absolutely. mean, the, the non-aggression principle applies 90-something percent of the time. And then there's these few instances where libertarians love to talk about, well, is this aggression? Is that aggression? It's hard to know. Yeah, but you know what? Whatever the principle is that you find the, you know, your central governing principle, somebody still has to enforce it. Well, who's this? You're what's the central governing principle upon, of the Republican Party? You're still depending upon people <laughs> who we all know are fallible and imperfect and subject to graft uh, to enforce that. Yeah. So you're you're just going to train so why one government at all. Government? I don't know that that's the case, and what my contention would be is that people that believe in the non-aggression principle should be able to try something new and um, not be prevented because of the current laws. I mean, we have a system that stifles innovation. Okay, well, I, I'm not, what, what you're talking about is, is looking for a place to set up a new government someplace. Well, why not and set not one sure up exactly here? I mean, this is a free that. country, right? This. We often call it that. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> right. Much of it. Paul, thanks. You know, the, thank you for calling in. We got we to gotta move on, but thanks I for understand. calling. Enjoy chatting with you. Take thank care. you. Appreciate it, Paul. Uh, Mark, I think we should just stop doing the show right now because we really have to lobby Congress and get involved in the political system. I don't think we should be doing this. I send emails anymore. every single week to my Congress critter asking them to do one thing or the other. And if they do it, they didn't do it because I sent them an email. Yeah, I believe that a preponderance of emails uh, will stop something. Well, um, it didn't stop the bailout. Remember the bank But bailout? it did stop the SOPA thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, if, if there's enough yeah. stuff and it's and they don't make enough money off of it, the bailout was going to be all kinds of money for them and their friends. Mm-hmm. It didn't stop the bailout. That's absolutely yeah. true. I don't send emails. I have stopped and I feel a lot happier because of it. And my my solution is to peacefully opt out whenever I can and try to live as free as I can within the world that we have. I think it's just flagellation on my part. I, I think if, if we did actually communicate like you suggested between people, we'd probably find out, wait a minute, we're communicating with each other. We can come up with decisions on our own. We don't need any middleman. We don't need we anybody. Need in, we don't need government at all. I think that's what would happen. Yeah. Well, it's a really interesting discussion, and there's more coming up just like that here on Free Talk Live. You can call with your thoughts at 855-450-3733. Do we need government, or is it an old, obsolete idea? More coming up. You got to pay attention to the small things, kid. Small things matter. Small problems become big problems. Take a transformer. Rain leaks into a transformer. Insulation system breaks down. Insulation system breaks down. Copper windings overheat. Copper windings overheat. Transformer blows. Transformer blows. Facility goes dark. Facility goes dark. Kid, you don't want to know what happens next. That's why I use Granger. Granger helps keep small problems from turning into big problems. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger. For the ones who get it done. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.free talklive.com this your family today tip is brought to you by nestle toll house morsels helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever visit us at tollhouse.com 
You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash your family today. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, April 18th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,302. Silver opened at $19.65 while Bitcoin is trading at $474.17. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more. GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Support also comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner, one terahash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today, bitmaintech.com. And support comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Online, affordablesound.com, or give them a call, 512-459-5253. In the news, Senator Dianne Feinstein has stated that she is opening an investigation into how the McClatchy News Service obtained the classified conclusions of a Senate report into the CIA's use of torture. If someone distributed any part of this classified report, they broke the law and should be prosecuted, Feinstein said. The senator's statements come on the heels of McClatchy releasing the 20 conclusions of the Senate Intelligence Committee's report. Last week, the committee voted to send the conclusions in a 480-page summary to President Obama for declassification review. In an appearance on Russian TV, former NSA contractor Edward Snowden asked Russian President Vladimir Putin whether Russia engaged in mass spying of Russian citizens. Putin said Russia does not have as much money as they have in the United States and just doesn't have the technical devices that they have in the States. However, Russia has a surveillance system that has been described as prism on steroids, a reference to the NSA's data collection program. It's being called Google for the dark web. The Graham's search engine launched last week and is accessible only on the Tor browser. Wired reports the search engine is based on Google and can lead users to sites selling drugs, guns, fake identification, and other black market essentials. Before grams, such sites could only be found by users who knew the specific URL address. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. Support comes from the Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central at CoreyMooreShow.com. And support comes from Roberts and Roberts Broker Jank, precious metals at reasonable rates since 1977. Online at rrbi.co. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, April 18th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The Easter holiday falls on Sunday, April 20th, abbreviated as 420, which is a common phrase used by marijuana users as a cue to ingest their drug of choice. Well, that fact has led a coalition of Christian leaders to call on the United States to end the war on drugs. Al Jazeera reports the coalition says that Jesus Christ was about challenging unjust systems that held marginalized communities in bondage, much the same way that the drug war disproportionately leads to the incarceration of minorities. On Wednesday, the Christian leaders called for a change in the drug war, pushing for the repeal of federal laws that criminalize low-level drug possession. At least 58 are dead and more than 100 wounded following an attack Thursday on a United Nations base in South Sudan. The base was being used to shelter thousands of displaced civilians. AFP reports that 48 bodies have been recovered from inside the base. They include children, women, and men. 350 armed youth are blamed for the attack. 
And Google has updated its terms of service to make it clear that incoming and outgoing emails are scanned and analyzed for advertising. The update states that Google scans the contents of emails being sent and received through any Gmail account. Google users' data from personal files, search history, YouTube views, and map requests to display relevant ads that they hope will lead to more clicks and thus more revenue. The practice has garnered criticism from privacy groups. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, CHL courses, self-defense training, and firearm sales. Give them a call, 512-731-3585 or online at centraltexasgunworks.com. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwest Burritos with homemade tortillas. Online, cabobobs.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, April 18th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. A report confirms that many Iraqis are still holding a petty grudge about the U.S. invasion. An advanced alien civilization discovers an uninhabitable planet, and a single woman has a Facebook profile picture with her sister. This is The Onion Week in Review. A groundbreaking study published Monday in the Journal of the American Medical Association confirmed that it is impossible to lose weight, no one has ever done it, and those who are trying should give up immediately. Researchers said that findings conclusively proved that shedding excess weight has never happened, changing your physical appearance is impossible, and that all sorts of exercise personal training regimens and diets will never ever work well our test results conclusively prove that if you're going to the gym to lose weight you will fail you can work out every day and eat nothing and you still wouldn't lose an ounce skinny people will stay skinny overweight people will be overweight it's just how it is in other news an area man is outraged his private information is being collected by someone other than advertisers and a crowd cheers as this 93 year old up finally graduates from college this is the onion news network This is Free Talk Live. We are now in the third hour of tonight's program. We are live here on Sunday evening. And my name is Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. And we're so glad to be with you. Free Talk Live is a show where you can call about anything that's on your mind. We do have a couple of calls on the line, but if you have your thoughts that you want to lend to us, you can call us at 855-450-3733. That is the Pro XPN toll-free call in line. You can go to cam.freetalklive.com and see the show being done. There's a chat room there where you can interact with the other folks. Hey, look, we're not doing anything in that chat. We're not policing that chat room. Whatever goes on that chat room is your business. <laughs> but it's at cam.freetalklive.com. It's like Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happens in the free talk? I wish it stayed in the chat. Yeah, I, wish it, I was just going to say. We do actually put um, video archives of the show up on YouTube as well. I think, what is the YouTube channel for Free Talk Live, Mark? Oh, I don't know. Search uh, Free Talk Live. Yeah, that's a good move. All right. <laughs> so we've got a couple of calls on the line. Let's talk first with Chris listening in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Hey, Chris, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello. How you doing? Great. What's on your mind tonight? Uh, first, I can't believe, Mark, you killed your grandmother. I that's, didn't that's kill my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> so awful, isn't it, that uh, root beer story? I... It, it was it was a horrible story, yeah. but it's also, like, I couldn't help but laugh because it's kind of funny and shocking. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, it was my great grandmother, um, and it was it was a really you know for me for a cup for a few years it was really a terrible thing. Yeah, I'm sure I was I was making a little bit light out yeah, of it. Yeah, I know. But uh, as far uh, going back to uh, the government situation, I think uh, basically uh, it's going to stay this way for the end of this for the end of time as far as long as this government is around, and even you know other governments around the world, the whole oligarchy thing. Yeah. It's just the way it is, you know. It's uh, rich people have have the power because money controls the world, and that, and that's just it, you know. It's uh, it, it's like it's like when you go to your job, basically, you know, you're at the mercy of your boss for most people, anyway. And um, let me ask you this: kind of the same, I guess. There's there's an interesting th thought process coming around. Now, let's say that 3D printers become available. They become relatively cheap in the same way that plasma TVs went from $5,000 to $500 for big plasma. Um, and you can, right. you know, a, a 3D printer will then create another 3D printer. So you can buy one and give one to your neighbor or your friend or your relative or whatever, and then they can make one and send it off. And, and so you, you basically handle 
Um, and by the way, the 3D printer can make uh, solar cells so that you can then take your house off the grid. So once, I mean, like, it may really diminish the cost of things. And you may be able to make, you know, make ends meet with far less and have, a, you know, sort of reasonable middle class, what we would call a middle class lifestyle now by not having to work much at all. And I wonder what that would do for the world. Now, maybe technology will drag us out of this whole master-servant paradigm that's been around since the agrarian revolution. Well, that, that's, that's a great concept, but uh, if, if you think about it in the same way, if you come up with a 3D printer that starts making things, uh, I guess, easier for you to come off the grid, which is a good way, I guess, to put it, yeah. um, I think then government or state or there's going to be more regulation towards that printer or there are going to be laws made about that printer. Um, or they'll it, use it to print it, bombs it, or something. Right. There'll, there'll be there'll be a negative reaction to the positive reaction. You know what I mean? It's uh, it, I, I think that. That's that's the ultimate uh, outcome of of a situation like that. And I think but, that that's um, possible. At the same time, I think it's I think that's possible, but I think that things that the, the internet makes it that much more difficult now to do it. Um, for instance, uh, there was this guy named Hero in e ancient Egypt that created a steam uh, engine. But he didn't. It was just a sort of a novelty that kind of flew around the room. Um, and in Greece, in that short little piece in Greece, they, uh, I can't remember who it was, and but Peloponnesians of some sort or another, um, they, um, they they created a train track, but there was no engine to run it. So they sort of ro rolled these tr things across a track in Greece. If somebody would have had the communication to be able to combine these two pieces of technology together, it would have changed the world. Communication is the most important part here. If that 3D printer does get created, there's nothing that's going to be able to stop somebody from downloading a schematic of it and printing it up at some point, and it's going to spread virally. Um, you know, I think it will spread virally. Well, well, at the same time, but then it's a matter of what you're making and whether or not it's going to be legal or not. You know, when it first comes out, there will probably be no law against it because it hasn't been done yet. But once something starts getting mass-produced through, say, a, a 3D printer, um, I guarantee there would be a law to come out if it's printing out things that are against what, that I guess might politicians be, or lawmakers. Yeah, that might be a really important point because government does always take a while to sort of catch on to new technology. Like they're not exactly the fastest with Bitcoin is a great example. I mean, we had several years of relative freedom with Bitcoin before they really started to try to regulate it. Once it got it. popular, then they're now now attempting to regulate it. Right, but don't but, forget but there's that... we have a first mover kind of advantage, though. But there's that 3D, 3D gun. The government can make all the laws it wants against this 3D gun, but the 3D gun's on the Internet. You can print this thing out right. um, and... All right, there'll still be people making them. Yeah. Then, yeah. But then the, the government's power sort of exists in people's minds. You know, it's only like how scared are people that the government's going to get them if they do something illegal. And I think, you know, there's kind of a good case to be made that like people are so used to being uh, scoff laws. I mean, like we we break laws every day. Downloading and, music. They don't even go after people for that I anymore. Mean, I, I was actually just going to bring up that point is is music is, you know, you're saying um, it, in, in the opposite, in the opposite, uh, I guess, sense of it. Um, it. As far as music goes, I have, to, I have to actually be a musician also. And it, over the years, um, it's it's a lot different now with even the way that people listen to music. And mm -hmm. that's all because of technology. And it and it hasn't been good for the music industry or for the musician or I think even for um People, as far as like kids today, um, they're they're not playing instruments as much because you don't have to anymore. You know, you can basically go on your computer and have a virtual guitar, drums, or whatever you want, and you know, you can make a song on your laptop and never have to learn in you know an instrument or a lick of music or read anything anymore. And that's not necessarily a good thing for music. I well, I, I don't know, because no. at the same time, you're getting exposure to artists that would have never made it into the, you know, the, the controlled yeah, EMI, uh, or, you know, BMG and whoever else. I think it's important to bring up that, I mean, technology, the digital world as we know it, is laughing, I think, at every economic law 
and every po- political law, political regulation, it, like I, I think economics, in my opinion, goes out the door the instant you enter the digital realm. Bitcoin, they say, oh, it follows these economic laws. I don't think so. I think it breaks them all. It, and, and no one saw it coming, uh, or at least n- not really. And so I think when the government tries to legislate a lot of these things, like there's no, you can't, you'd have to declare I mean, just just look at look at the the the, uh, the tetrahedron that, that that Bitcoin is, in that you call it property, but it's actually like seven other things. You can't legislate it that way, right. and so I think the government there's just no way they're ever going to be able to really legislate this technology because it breaks all the rules. Yeah, I think government's and, the old technology, and the internet's new one. Yeah, and and they're going to trip <laughs> over themselves constantly. It's going to fall up, and it's going to fall apart on its own weight when it keeps trying to. Suddenly, they're just going to legislate their own existences, you know, out of existence. Right, Chris. Th- thank you for calling in tonight. I appreciate your perspective, and uh, feel welcome to call us back anytime. Let's talk to Jay listening in Williston, North Dakota. Hey, Jay, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind tonight? Hey, hey guys. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I just had a quick question to you guys about um, Internet anonymity and staying uh, staying, uh, being anonymous. Sure. Searching online. Yeah, everything. What do you guys do personally, or what would you do? What would you recommend to someone who someone like me i don't want to do anything that's illegal but i do want to you know contact people for political reasons uh have discussions send emails back and forth i know no one really cares what i'm what i'm doing in the long run but i just it's a good thing to practice oh yeah because they can always get you for something jay hold on the line if you would and we'll uh, talk about this further in moments here on free talk live i'm sure brian has some stuff to say yeah i got some thoughts on that done some research on this This is the Sunday show of Free Talk Live. Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is. And it's at BitcoinGeneralStore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything with free shipping. What can you find at BitcoinGeneralStore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. You gotta see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book. And it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me like, Do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. 
Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state And you're looking for some real estate Well, I know a guy who's really great It's the realtor Mark Warden Do you want a home with 20 acres A lakeside cabin Any takers for renters Buyers and sellers too Mark Warden is the guy for you PorcupineRealEstate.com you can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're listening to the live Sunday night show with uh, me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. And freetalklive.com is where you go to find our website. We actually have a feature uh, that integrates with Reddit on the front of the Free Talk Live website where you can suggest um, show prep to us. And you can kind of send in your own stories and vote them up or vote them down based on how interesting you think they are and look at other people's as well. And to do that, all you just do is go to freetalklive.com and you'll see it right there on the front of the page. You'll need both a Free Talk Live account and a Reddit account. It's really easy and we walk you through it, but mm. um, that, that is the reality. Cool. All right, 855-450-3733 is the number to call tonight if you want to weigh in with your thoughts on anything we've been talking about tonight or anything you, you want to bring up that's a new topic. You can also call us on Skype at lrn.fm. Those are the ProXPN uh, phone lines for Free Talk Live. And let's go back to Jay uh, listening in Williston, North Dakota. Hey, Jay, you're back on Free Talk Live. Yep. So my question was, um, how would you guys stay anonymous online for <clears throat> searching, but also emailing? And uh, I'd also, I'm also kind of curious. I don't know much about it, but Bitcoin. Uh, I think one of your advertisements talks about where you can uh, download or whatever, get your bitcoins, and it's anonymous. Or how does that work? And and what level of confidence can you really have that? You you know if if something happens in the future, let's say let's say someone just well, someone in your audience becomes a, a let's say a political force, mm. someone that the government would want to highlight and and manipulate and say hey you know we know you've done this right and we can look at your search history or something and to kind of um, uh, what do you say diminish their their potency politically. Do you, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. Brian, what do you think about just that? Just a regular person. Sure. Um, I mean, to start off with the communication thing, I mean, I recommend if, if you're, you know, if you're talking about like maybe political hot topics, uh, I definitely recommend uh, Tor, using Tor, okay, which is, uh, mm-hmm. I think you can go to torproject.org and you can download an entire package that you know that that gives you uh, access to Tor. It'll have its own web browser. And it's everything. pretty easy. I've it's done very, it. Yeah, yeah. I've done it. It's slower than Christmas, though. Right. Um, I definitely want to want to just. I mean, you know, th- there's degrees to how far you can go with this. Uh, but as far as like communicating, uh, you know, email is by and large. You know, th- there, there's all right. There's a messaging service called OTR where you can kind of encrypt what you're saying, and, and it's really good encryption. But uh, but but email encryption and using email is really the only really secure way to do it. Uh, you know, to to, to where nobody's going to see what's in it using something called PGP. And there's a great extension for Firefox and for Chrome called Mailvelope that will encrypt your email address or, you know, that, that will, that will really easily set up uh, encrypting email through Gmail or GMX or Yahoo mail. Is that based uh, or on take any, PGP? 
Yes, it is PGP encryption, okay. and it's super simple to set up. Yeah, um, it's it's a really really great thing to do. If um, you don't want to use Mailvelope, um, I'm actually a voiceover artist, and I have um, worked on a project which I narrated, which is a tutorial about how to set up PGP encryption with your Gmail. Mm-hmm. Like if you if you just search. Um, encrypted Gmail tutorial, you'll probably find this video. It's like the first one that comes up. Yeah. But I mean, really, the, the best the best way to, you know, totally anonymize yourself, uh, and I don't recommend, as far as anonymity, it's pretty tough to do with any kind of uh, Android or iOS device. Um, the, the Really, the, the best, you know, have a computer and just, just, you know, when you get on Tor, when you use Tor, just pretend you are somebody else. You know, like, I mean, just use it, you know, change your whole mindset and everything. Uh, I mean, that's what I do when I get on tour. Because otherwise you get sloppy. Yeah, I'm not Brian Sovereign. I mean, I pretend I'm somebody else. That you know, sounds in, so much harder to do. Like, well, it's, so much... I don't know. It's fun. You can make it fun. And I mean, if, if you want to, if you want to do that sort of thing, but that, that's the level that, that I think you have to go to. And Splitting also your personality, that's the level. you. Have well, to go not to. necessarily your personality, but, um, you know, just like your name, just thinking differently. Just use one of the other voices in your head. Ed. You can also <laughs> use those throwaway email accounts, um, that I, I don't know what, uh, not hush mail, but there's, there's well, the, hush mail is pretty good because they only want like you know a username and a password, right? And know, then so, that's so you can throw away. You can use that over and over again to uh, you know to do whatever. But hush mail you. will give information to cops, right? But if, if you're pretending to be it. somebody else, if you're on tour, yeah, at, with ProXPN, mm-hmm. um, you know you're you're hooking up to tour through ProXPN.com. It doesn't matter what they give them, right? Um, you know they can they can give them all that gobbledygook. They'll never know anything. Yeah, sure. and, and it wasn't far- Brian who did it. It was um, Harry Brian. Yeah, it was this other guy. Yeah, <laughs> it was Harry. So I mean. <laughs> How do you? What do you think about that so far? Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, did you say uh, Pro XPN? Is that what is that? That's a VPN service, uh, and they're great. Oh, okay. Yeah, you gotcha. you want you want to be yeah, running that anyway, that. whether you're anonymizing or not. I think that's a good thing to run pretty much all the time. So you would use not only Tor but a VPN plus Tor. Brian? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I use a VPN all the time, whether you're yourself or, you know, someone else. And then Tor is when you want to use this uh, anonymous identity. Uh, And I have one other suggestion, Jay. Uh, You asked about Bitcoin. And there's a friend of ours who actually has written a book called The Anonymous Bitcoin Book. And it's at anonymousbitcoinbook.com. That is like a whole guide to using Bitcoin anonymously. So it's probably a little too complicated to sum up on the air. But I would say that book is really solid. Yeah, it looks like a great read. Um, if I could just just kind of bring up one kind of scenario for you for you because I this is what I often wonder about the whole idea of being anonymous and and how deep it can go. I was watching the news uh, a couple months ago and they talked about how they uh, the DEA or whoever they busted people using the Silk Road and they mentioned specifically that they were using it through tour. And using bitcoins, and so I was, I'm kind of curious, like, you know, where does if if people really want, obviously, something that I'm talking, I'm talking to someone about politics or whatever, and in the immediate, you know, and right now, no one really cares. No one's going to devote resources to this, but if they really want to get to you, it, it, pretty much, is there nothing that you can do? If There's if they know your you name, do. like, if they know who they want to mm-hmm. look at. Yeah, there's nothing you can yeah. do, um, and I, and I'll bring. I like bringing up this point because it's a, it's kind of a fun and scary one at the same time. Is that if you go to Snopes and you type in mosquito yeah. drone, Snopes is going to say, mm-hmm. um, "Yeah, we can't prove or disprove that this thing exists." What okay? is a mosquito drone? A mosquito drone, drone is just is a, is a drone the size of a mosquito, controlled, radio controlled, that has a camera on it. And guess what? There's no encryption that stops a camera. Okay, I mean that's just that's how it is. Right. How uh, does it have a battery? Well, yeah, that's what I. That's why I don't believe it. Have a little, a little fusion engine. Yeah, well, that's I, always I, a problem. Th- things fusion. are things are getting better. And how much does it take to you know power that little bit of business? I mean, you know, who knows? Uh, I mean, flight would be the thing. I mean, that that's that's the thing, right? But the problem is, is that you know, Snopes is this internet community, worldwide community that is gauged on, or you know, that is dead set on pr- disproving things, and they can't. Mm. That's a problem. Well, well, I, and I. And I and I know even that just when you when you type a key on your keyboard, there's an electromagnetic signal that emanates from your computer. And if someone had the right equipment, they could detect what you're typing 
right then and there. They'd have to be, the, you know, in a truck parked next to your house. But if they wanted to, they could do it. So is that so? I guess it just depends. Uh, this on, this yeah. is accurate, but then I mean, like that. That's kind of possible. I don't know where it's been done. But then my recommendation for that is learn Dvorak. <laughs> Jay, thank you so much for the call tonight. It's an alternative keyboard. Will the IRS back taxes? Listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now I can help you reduce or eliminate your tax debts and end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce and eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. And with the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which order you going to display? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring time into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable you. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, no. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the wind working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimespree.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Are you about to meet the media? If you're about to be interviewed, do their homework for them. Know this about the person who will interview you. He or she is busy, so expect minimal, if any, preparation. He or she doesn't know as much about your topic as you do. He or she isn't as concerned as you are about getting your message out, so you need to take responsibility. Provide a biography and fact sheet, photographs, or other materials that tell your story story. Reporters won't be put off if you supply frequently asked questions. Remember, Public Speaking 101, at the end of the speech, what's the one thing you want them to remember? You can download the document I supply to reporters who interview me and squirm through a video that demonstrates how not to conduct your media interview at www.survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to the live Sunday night edition. Free Talk Live, of course, is a seven night a week show, and we are here on Sunday doing a show for you. And we, of course, is Stephanie. 
And Brian. And Mark. Oh, uh, you know, we moved here for the Free State Project. We picked up our lives. And now, Stephanie, you basically went to uh, an Ivy League college here in you know, <laughs> grad school. Yeah. Yeah. But, here in New Hampshire. But, but but I could have gone to some other grad school. I chose to come here. You really because... roughed it at Dartmouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I really like living in New Hampshire. The real reason I came here was stayed. because I wanted to live here and I stayed after grad school. Yep. So. And I, I, we picked up, Ian and I picked up and moved uh, from Florida. Brian, you from New York? Yes. And, you know, the idea is... And me is, all the way from Massachusetts. All the way from Massachusetts. <laughs> and the idea is is to, you know, move as many liberty-loving individuals to one state to as, as possible. And that's what the Free State Project's about. And you can go find out about it at freestateproject.org. But I've really kind of been wondering this thing um, for the last couple of... Uh, Days and and you know I I'll get some new idea and, and chew on it for a while and this is just kind of how my mind works, but there, are, uh, look for instance I was told by a person of the sort of liberal persuasion how great Denmark was and I've heard this about Sweden and a variety of other um, you know Western European countries and how those places there really work and I wonder to myself if I believed that. Why the hell wouldn't you pick up and move there? Mm -hmm. I really, I really, no, I'm not being mean. I'm really asking that question mm -hmm. because the opportunity came up in the form of the Free State Project for me to live around, not a place where the ideas of liberty actually work, but just where the promise where they might work. Mm -hmm. And I picked up and moved. And I don't, like, I kind of wonder why, why, why? Mm -hmm. um, you know, my uncle is a tried, dyed-in-the-wool Republican. Every issue, every time he comes down on the Republican side, he lives in Silicon Valley, California. Wow. And... Why? Well, he just he gets all kinds of frustration because, <laughs> as you can imagine, you know, like it's frustrating to live in yeah, California. You almost wonder if that's on purpose. Like, why wouldn't you, like... To beat himself the cage up. door is open, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you could go anywhere in the world and, you know, live this utopian dream. Now, I don't know where the Republican utopia is. I, would I was going to say Texas. Texas is, is probably about <laughs> as close as you can get. You you couldn't get elected anywhere besides maybe Austin as a, uh, you know, as a Democrat mm -hmm. in Texas. And it's, it's a pretty Republican place. Most of their, uh, you know, the fights are in the primary season as opposed to the general elections. Um, I... I you know, that's that's one place. I'm certain there are other places. Ireland is kind of conservative in many ways and rather uh, fiscally and, and socially conservative. Mm -hmm. There's another thought. But I just kind of wonder if you believe that um, your ideas are good, why wouldn't you, A, look around the world to find a place where they most closely represent those ideas? Right. And B, if you knew about it, why wouldn't you pick up and move? Mm. And this is really the question that I have for people. I really want to know. You can call us at 855-450-FREE. Tell me, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm honestly befuddled. If you're a you know, progressive type and you believe that Denmark is the place to live, why not go? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, a great no, question. Yeah, no, I think it's a fair question. Yeah, now, I mean, oftentimes, immigration could be an issue for some people. It's harder to immigrate to some places than others. It's supposed to be quite easy there, and as a, an American, you can work. So, I mean, that's immigration right. honestly isn't an issue in but Denmark. But the U.S. is still going to claim that you owe them taxes, of course. Um, you can cease to be, you can work you can towards give up your US getting up, giving up your U.S. citizenship. And honestly, the U.S. government is unlikely to do anything to you unless you come back to the United States. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, actually picked up and moved, then, um, you know, that problem would be solved. But yes, if you want to come back and visit family, you're going to have to continue to pay the, um, you know, the money that the government believes. But that's only if you make more than $100,000 in a year, and the average person isn't going to make that no matter where they go. So... I thought it was 80,000. It was. Oh, and they changed it? Mm-hmm. Huh. I think it, it might have gone up to 90, but it's certainly gone up from 80. Okay. Didn't know that. I am not a tax professional. You need to consult with your tax professional <laughs> yes. um, when dealing with these things. But, you know, these are kind of the things I wonder. They tell libertarians all the time, hey, if you don't like it here, move to Somalia. Well, I, <laughs> I'm not sure that I'm looking for a tribal society. The UN and the U.S. have done everything to destabilize for the last 30 years. If I wanted that, then I probably would move to, to Somalia. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not sh sure that Somalia is libertopia. Mm. Um, I'll I mean, move to Zomia. 
I'm not sure where that is. That's uh, Zomia is an area around close, around the Himalayas, uh, okay. between like China, India, and all that. And it's a it's a region. It's not a country, but mm-hmm. it is a well known region that actually has no governance, yeah. no taxes, none of that. And it's a, it's a thorn in the side of the Chinese and and of India uh, that you know they can't tax these people. And they can't because they're nomadic, and so like they can't control them. And it's it is actually it, there's a book about it called The Art of Not Being Governed, came out in 2009, and it is a genuine anarchist society, and it's working out pretty darn well. The problem is is that oftentimes, um, you know, this is the way it often is with the nomadic yeah. types: is you can't really do anything with them, you can't count them. They're not no right. They won't, they won't get a birth certificate. Right. <laughs> you know, they just keep yeah. on. You know, who are these people? Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, I tell you, when we get asked, the, you know, I mean, this gets leveled at libertarian types all the time. Why don't you just move? I mean, myself, I'll admit, it's even recently, it's getting to about to the point where I'm like, yeah, you know, what? I despise American government action so much and American culture so much. Fine, I'll go. But you where know, do you I mean, go? Well, right. No, I, there may That's not be anywhere better. But, they, but you know, the, the, the disgust may build up just so much. You know, for a person that maybe they will. And like, you know, it's so unfortunate that people aren't like, well, you know, why don't, why don't we talk about this? Instead, they just want to say, no, get out. Uh, and that almost makes America even less appealing. I got to admit sometimes. But thankfully, the Free State Project's here. I find, uh, you know, I find the United States to be uh, appealing in some places and some places to be just horrendous. Um, yeah, you know, it's really different in New Hampshire compared to like if you go to New York City. Yeah. Like, you really feel the state a lot more there, I have to say. No, there's certainly a lot more of it uh, there. I mean, that's absolutely the truth. Yeah. Well, I mean, pretty much anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I find this a befuddling thing, and I really don't understand. Um, I do like the idea of seasteading, mm-hmm. where sure. people can essentially take you know either a cruise ship or um, you know build some kind of society on the water. I think a cruise ship basically is a floating city. So if... Somebody in the Liberty Movement got enough money up to buy a cruise ship and said, What's yeah. the status on that, though? Wasn't there going to be the Blue Seed ship off, off yeah. the coast of San Francisco? It's a funding issue, and it's just not going anywhere. Yeah, and that's too bad. Yeah. And what about the Honduras Free Cities thing? Yeah. That's, that's in progress. It's in progress, it, but, but these things take a while. Yeah, and as I... As and I, I don't trust anything on the land, frankly. It's not that I wouldn't be oh, interested yeah. in it, but I just don't trust it on the land. Once you get it built, that's, you know, once it's built on the land, then the uh, the... The robber barons come in and they do whatever they do. And it's, you know, I, I like the idea. I'm, I'm with them. I'm, I want to try it. Um, you know, the Free State Project is built on the land, too. But I'm I'm thinking that these uh, cruise ships are probably the way to go. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, like the Honduras thing, supposedly that's going to be a very decentralized uh, situation um, where it's even like the governance is being done almost vi- via software. Uh, is kind of the That's idea that I've gotten, which which or that I've heard. Um, I have, don't quote me on that. But that, that's the idea I've been given, and I I think that's a fascinating thing to at least get tried. Like at well, least they're attempting it. Now, I mean, you, go ahead. When you have small city states, you have um, a, you know, oftentimes governance isn't going to be bad because the the city state it's like a hotel. Mm-hmm. Look, there's centralized uh, bureaucracy in a hotel. They've got their rules, and you operate by their rules. But if you don't like it. You leave. You just pick up and go yeah. to the next hotel. So, um, if you know, if 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 governments are small enough where you can do this, and it's not so difficult to cross these nation borders, because this is really what it seems to come down to is it's it all comes down to how much guarding is there going on on these these given international borders. Mm-hmm. And when it's the state U.S. State Department has tried very, very, very hard. To make sure that other countries, you know, third worldy type countries, have apparatuses, the immigration apparatuses, mm. and it's you know they're locking down, um, and basically turning in, you in a tax in. kettle. It's to keep you in, and uh, they also spread the propaganda that Mexico is so dangerous, which oh yeah, isn't necessarily true. This is Free Talk Live. One more segment coming up: eight fifty five, four fifty free. If you've got a 401k, IRA, or pension plan, I've got some really bad news for you. The IRS wants you to think these qualified plans are the best way to save for retirement. They give you a tax break when you contribute. Sounds good, right? Wrong. A qualified plan could be a tax disaster when you retire. With $17 trillion in debt, taxes are already going up. Imagine paying a top tax rate of 94% like the 1940s. 
There is a better way. It's an alternative, the ultra-rich use that beats the pants off your IRA or 401k. It's been around for years. Your money grows tax-deferred, has no taxes in retirement, and no income taxes when you die. Plus, you can grow your money potentially double digits with no risk of losing money when the market crashes. If the market tanks like 2008, you lose nothing. Call 800-488-1677 now to get a free copy of my Inc. magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, to protect yourself from taxes and crashes. Just cover shipping and handling. The next 37 callers get a free trial to the Millionaire Black Box. 1-800-488-1677. Call 1-800-488-1677. 1-800-488-1677. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light Systems system today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. Free Talk Live. Well, I'm a working police officer. I'm actually on duty in a small town in Central Texas. I've been doing this job 10 years. 99% of what you guys talk about is dead on. We got guys getting into this profession just to wear a badge and play God. Mm. It's getting worse and worse. There used to be a couple of decent guys that I worked with. Both of them have quit. Why did they quit? Well, it's because of the BS. We can't help the people that actually need help, which is what you get into this job to do if you're, if you're a good person. It's interesting that whenever honest cops call in like you, we get the same story, that the corruption rises through the ranks, that the good guys, the guys like you that got in to make a difference and actually help people and catch the real bad guys, the guys like you end up getting frustrated by the system, frustrated by the corruption and the bureaucracy, and they end up quitting, which of course means that more bad guys can move in and move up through the ranks. Is anything that, that, inaccurate about that? No, sir. That's my point entirely. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show, and we are actually kicking off the last segment of tonight's program. But never fear. There's still time to get your calls in if you make them at 855-450-3733. That is our Pro XPN toll-free call in line or on Skype at LRN.FM. And uh, tonight, it's me, Stephanie, with you. And Brian. And Mark. All right. And now, Brian, you had uh, something about how the poor aren't paying their fair share of taxes. Oh, what boy. is this about? <laughs> yeah. You know, but before I do, I'm kind of shocked we haven't gotten any... Easter calls. I just, I, yeah, I noticed I, that too. I would have seen that coming. I would You're have just so forgotten. ready to take oh. on a Christian on uh, Easter. <laughs> yeah, I, well, you let them have their day. Man. On a meat hook, Brian. <laughs> not even non Christians, but like now there's a bunch of, well, I, never mind. I'm not even going there. Well, uh, yeah, I, I guess I 
sort of that was in the back of my mind too. Although I could have just forgotten that today is Easter. It's just another day to me. Yeah, much. that 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 could very well be. Yeah. You know, when you have a child, holidays uh, take on a different meaning. Um, I, you know, whatever I think about Easter and the fact that I'm a Quaker and we don't celebrate holidays um, <laughs> doesn't really have anything to do with my son wanting to have a chocolate bunny. And um, you know, so. There you go. Well, he believes that uh, the Easter bunny has chocolate poo. Isn't that right? <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Those are the Hershey's well, what, kisses. what else would a Hershey kiss be? Yeah, where, where, do, where, where do they come from? It makes perfect sense. <laughs> well, while we're talking about uh, poo, the new American. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Good segue there. The uh, They are... There's, it's just more of a blog post, essentially a write-up, and this is done on April 14th, so just before tax day, um, and it's taxes are the poor paying their fair share. And the loud and persistent cry we hear from Democrats, liberals, and progressives is that the rich, quote-unquote, aren't paying their fair share, quote-unquote, of taxes. What they really mean is that the rich aren't, uh, aren't paying their fair share of federal income taxes, since the poor are certainly paying Social Security tax of 6.2% and Medicare tax of 1.45% on every dollar of their income, as well as the state sales tax and federal excise taxes on things like alcohol and gasoline. Yeah, contrary to this claim, the IRS says that about half of Americans pay no income tax. Since that half is made up of the poor, you know it what appears- I can tell, it's actually lower than that sure. because there's only 144 million uh, tax returns filed in 2009, and there were 310 million people. Um, and then of those tax returns, some of them are married. Some of them are married, certainly, but of those tax returns, half of them had no tax burden. Mm-hmm. So you're saying it's less than. So, so what you're some saying, people just don't file right, when you yeah. say that they don't pay income tax. Yeah, they don't pay. They pay. They file income tax forms and then don't pay. Um, yeah. And there's a lot like that. If if we were assuming some people are filing jointly because they're married, that means that everyone would have to be married in order for that scenario to work. And obviously, that we know that's not, that true. not everyone and not every married couple files jointly. Right. right that's right. true. So yeah, I would round it up to say statistic. 200. I'd say about a third of the U.S. population doesn't file a tax return at all. Mm-hmm. And if they don't file a tax re- uh, tax return, they're clearly not paying income tax. So you can say um, a third plus a half. Mm. Some taxes you can't get away from, though, like the like you were saying, Brian, that are built in. I, I mean, yeah, if, you work, taxes. if you work for someone else, they're, you're going to have wages like garnished. Right yeah, the Medicare tax is getting paid. You yeah. know, uh, and right then out. like, uh, you know, gas taxes. If you buy stuff, there's often taxes really built sure. in. To those things Poor people are, are paying playing lottery a lottery at a disproportionate level than rich people too. That's sure. the math tax. Yeah, <laughs> Just the math tax. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> people that don't know how to do math pay, paying playing this a great deal. Yeah, and and you talked about cigarette and alcohol taxes. Sure. Yeah. So I mean, I, I thought it was an interesting perspective that sure, there's plenty of people that aren't paying taxes at all, and they're not the rich because the rich would be getting hounded by the IRS. Mm. Um, I think it's. It's really just kind of a jab at Democrats. I think that's the whole point of this. I think it's ridiculous. Personally, I think it's great that there are people that aren't paying taxes. But (laughs) most of the people that are not filing tax returns, probably the vast majority of people that are um, filing tax returns, don't have a tax burden at all. Right. I mean, you got to ask yourself. You you don't have. What's the threshold? It's like ten. If you make under ten thousand dollars a year, then you don't even have to file. It's my understanding. I am not a lawyer. I do not give legal advice. Um, But I do. You know. I mean, what do you want a nun's tax return for? She gave all. She gave her life to Christ. She (laughs) she has no no. I mean, the church. She paid the ultimate price. The church owns the the bare wooden stool. She sitting on she has nothing so what do you want to tax what she how's she gonna fill this out you know did you work this year yes all hours i was awake were dedicated to the church what'd you get paid nothing you know like this is there's nothing to there's nothing there <laughs> yeah. so there's there's a lot of that um people that just don't make enough they don't file yeah you know we do have a call on the line brian i think you may enjoy this one jim bob is listening in arizona hey jim bob you're on free talk live what's on your mind Jim Bob. The aptly named free, free Talk Radio. I called in to not wish you a happy Easter, Brian, because your girlfriend is utterly a sensitive bigot. And by the way, my And mom, you're nothing you less than we'll that. Goodbye. Night. You yeah. talk about bigots. Look, I have no interest in talking to anybody that thinks dropping nuclear bombs on anybody, I don't care what they've done is a good idea. Sorry. He's just a troll. Yeah, serious troll. Uh, serious troll and pathetic. 
quite frankly. Um, I mean, to, to somehow revel in the necessity of millions of people or hundreds of thousands or thousands, however many, it doesn't matter, dying. Uh, sorry. You know, uh, yeah. let's see who's rude now. The guy that thinks the dropping bombs is okay or the person that hangs up on the phone. Sorry, I'll take the person that hung up the phone. Wow. I was really hoping, again, I got fooled by the uh, entertaining sounding name. Well, he's, uh, you know, I mean, on Free Talk Live, anybody can call in. and mm-hmm. um, We you know, do the, have a one call per night policy. Though. We did. Yeah, he broke that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he probably didn't feel like his call was completed. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> poor guy. Anyway, um, so speaking of poor, tell me about the rest of this piece. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it just goes down a bunch of numbers, but I think Mark's point in that this is like inaccurate at its face uh you know really really hammers a lot of them but i can go to the end you know to kind of get the wrap up um because let's see the, the solution to this disparity is not to make the poor pay their fair share the solution is to substantially reduce the tax burden of those who are paying the taxes now now i don't mind that solution but you know again this whole thing the whole write-up is is just a huge jab do you think it so is it like satirical? Is it a joke? Yeah, I, I think it's meant to be somewhat satirical. It's meant to like call out a contradiction on the Democrats. And I agree, the Democrats are do sit in contradiction, mm-hmm. you know, in this case. And like, no, you know, legislation doesn't help anybody in the end. It never does. It doesn't help the poor. It doesn't help anyone. Oftentimes, um, that what they want from taxes from the poor is, is the intention of that they have a stake in their governance. Um, but the governance is so inefficient that how can you ever have a stake in it? Um, you know, I mean, it's just it's essentially how much are you victimized by this organization and the poor when they have, you know, it, they miss 30 percent of their income a lot more than the rich miss 30 percent of their income. Um, you know, for them, it's how nice of a car do you get to buy or um, how much longer, you know, wh- where do you get to go on vacation for the poor people? It's what quality of food are they eating and, uh, you know, what, what quality of the neighborhood are they living in? And that's undesirable. I think the best way to create a, um, you know, a sense of stake is to set up a system where people are rewarded for productive behavior. And that isn't the system that we have. Yeah. Um, you know, rich and poor, corporation to individual. People are rewarded for all kinds of behaviors that aren't productive. And that's a real problem. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, and this like this bickering back and forth, you know, of like, well, this person should be taxed, that should be taxed. <laughs> well, really everybody just... always thinks the other person isn't paying enough taxes. No, that's yeah. right. That, that's <laughs> well, and the government to... thinks that nobody is paying enough taxes. Right. You yeah, know, they... yeah. No, we need yeah. more. <laughs> yeah. yeah we... There's $17 trillion in debt. And, and how can they ever get out of that? How is it possible that my son was born six years ago and has a d- tax burden of like, you know, I mean, potentially when you amortize it all the way out, hundreds of thousands of dollars, but certainly tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. He owes the federal government. I mean, he can't sp- he can't spell his entire name out. Uh, well, maybe yeah. he well, could. That's I don't if you know. Accept that that's legitimate, but yeah, how could that possibly be legitimate? They, everybody, ex- I mean, you know, people, American society functions as though that's legitimate, right? One of the disturbing things that this article does bring up is how there is an incentive to have children. Um, and that's disconcerting. Yeah. You, you know, in fact, that talk about a contradiction because so many people, uh, especially in the liberty movement, will claim the Democrats are trying to depopulate, uh, you know, society and, and the, the planet. You know what I mean? And but then because like of environmentalism. Right. But then they're incentive. Yeah. But then they're incentivizing like like the, they'll come right out and say, look, the earth has too many people. But then they're incentivizing people to have children. I mean, I'll agree. That's, that's that is the Republicans. an oddball contradiction. Um, so that's the Republicans uh, slipped in things like earned income tax credit and head okay, of that comes from the Republican stuff. side. I believe that to be entirely okay. the case. Okay, because um, you know they just want they want welfare in the way they want it. Yeah. So you know to get welfare, you're going to have to file the tax return and have some kids. Mm. Yeah, I'd I'd like to not do that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's been Stephanie with you tonight, and Brian, and Mark. Visit our website at freetalklive.com. There's a Free Talk Live seven nights a week, so tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, we'll be back. See you later. The warning signs. First, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave. But he told me he'd change. 
So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me. About my job, my kids' education, my money, my safety, my future. He took away my choices. But I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis? Battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Anition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, April 18th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,302, silver opened at $19.65, while Bitcoin is trading at $474.17. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more, GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Support also comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner, one terahash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today, BitmainTech.com. And support comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Online, affordablesound.com, or give them a call, 512-459-5253. In the news, Senator Dianne Feinstein has stated that she is opening an investigation into how the McClatchy News Service obtained the classified conclusions of a Senate report into the CIA's use of torture. If someone distributed any part of this classified report, they broke the law and should be prosecuted, Feinstein said. The senator's statements come on the heels of McClatchy releasing the 20 conclusions of the Senate Intelligence Committee's report. Last week, the committee voted to send the conclusions in a 480-page summary to President Obama for declassification review. In an appearance on Russian TV, former NSA contractor Edward Snowden asked Russian President Vladimir Putin whether Russia engaged in mass spying of Russian citizens. Putin said Russia does not have as much money as they have in the United States and just doesn't have the technical devices that they have in the States. However, Russia has a surveillance system that has been described as prism on steroids, a reference to the NSA's data collection program. It's being called Google for the dark web. The Gram's search engine launched last week and is accessible only on the Tor browser. Wired reports the search engine is based on Google and can lead users to sites selling drugs, guns, fake identification, and other black market essentials. Before Grams, such sites could only be found by users who knew the specific URL address. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. Support comes from The Cory Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central at CoreyMooreShow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage, Inc., precious metals at reasonable rates since 1977, online at rrbi.co. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, April 18th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com.
The Easter holiday falls on Sunday, April 20th, abbreviated as 420, which is a common phrase used by marijuana users as a cue to ingest their drug of choice. Well, that fact has led a coalition of Christian leaders to call on the United States to end the war on drugs. Al Jazeera reports the coalition says that Jesus Christ was about challenging unjust systems that held marginalized communities in bondage, much the same way that the drug war disproportionately leads to the incarceration of minorities. On Wednesday, the Christian leaders called for a change in the drug war, pushing for the repeal of federal laws that criminalize low-level drug possession. At least 58 are dead and more than 100 wounded following an attack Thursday on a United Nations base in South Sudan. The base was being used to shelter thousands of displaced civilians. AFP reports that 48 bodies have been recovered from inside the base. They include children, women and men. 350 armed youth are blamed for the attack. And Google has updated its terms of service to make it clear that incoming and outgoing emails are scanned and analyzed for advertising. The update states that Google scans the contents of emails being sent and received through any Gmail account. Google users' data from personal files, search history, YouTube views, and map requests to display relevant ads that they hope will lead to more clicks and thus more revenue. The practice has garnered criticism from privacy groups. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, CHL courses, self-defense training, and firearm sales. Give them a call, 512-731-3585 or online at centraltexasgunworks.com. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwest Burritos with homemade tortillas. Online, cabobobs.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, April 18th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Delighted health insurance executives gather in an outdoor coliseum to watch a patient battle cancer. And a self-conscious flasher is fully clothed under his trench coat. This is the Onion Week in Review. While stressing that they would absolutely never consider doing anything of the sort, German leaders quietly admitted this week that they were pretty sure they could carry out another Holocaust if they ever truly wanted to. Quickly noting that the Holocaust was an atrocity that should never be repeated, no matter how easy it would be to do so, almost all members of the German parliament discreetly conceded that with their country country's dominance of Eurozone GDP, pulling off the unthinkable genocide would not be the least bit difficult. I'm just saying, hypothetically, that we very easily could do it. I mean, we definitely have the infrastructure, and the concentration camps are still standing. In other news, a so-called Christian has an erection. A new study finds more children are growing up in single-parent households, and a real-life Nancy Drew traces the source of her HPV. This is the Onion News Network. We reconvene at Liberty Conspiracy Radio on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. If you're streaming us, podcasts after the fact at Podomatic and at iTunes. Just look for Liberty Conspiracy. And, of course, the Liberty Conspiracy website and Liberty Conspiracy Facebook pages. You can find our podcasts listed there once they are posted. I'm Gardner Goldsmith. Thanks for joining us. I'll open up the Skype line shortly. We haven't been together since last Monday, so, man... Do we have a lot to discuss? All right. Always good to come in after other Liber- Liberty Radio Network programs, such as, for example, the great Free Talk Live. And I will look for their podcast as well. If you are listening to us in podcast form, uh, you can also check them out live at LRN at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time. They're on all the time, constantly. They're just talking about freedom every day. They're great guys. I'm Gardner Goldsmith. Thanks for joining us. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, it is Gard Goldsmith on Twitter. And uh, if you're a friend of mine on Facebook, uh, feel free to post about the show. You can also email me at libertyconspiracy at yahoo.com. That's libertyconspiracy at yahoo.com. The Skype line opening up in uh, just a moment. I'll get it in the next segment uh, during the next commercial break. It is Gardner, G-A-R-D-N-E-R dot Goldsmith on Skype. Ooh, news time. Oh, boy. Yeah. This is the ABC News theme with the old ABC News 1970 Jigga Jigga guitar sound. Here it comes. All right, we hear that a thousand times, and I always mention it every time, but i got to hear it again. Here it, wait. Yeah, man, I love it. I love 
it all. Wow, man, they really took some risks in music back then, and they still do. Okay, let's get into our news update. And then later in the program, I would like to cover uh, even more information. I think the the uh, most sizable story should be coverage of the Bundy Ranch situation, how it's being depicted by many in the pop media, how the left wing, which got support for the nonviolent protests over the uh, the bailouts and things like that in uh, New York for Occupy Wall Street, they got uh, support from people as long as they were nonviolent. They are not supporting the Bundy Ranch people, uh, generally speaking. We'll talk about that and uh, give you, in the next hour, I think, an extended look at the concept of rights. And uh, this will be sort of like a little educational segment and how a contemporary story has set me off. And it just so happens that the guy who set me off is Antonin Scalia, the very guy that I've often mentioned who in the Heller case in uh, 2007, 2008, uh, ruled that, oh, yeah, the right to keep and bear arms is an, in, 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 an individual right. Yes, of course. Duh. And because rights are individual. But he didn't go that way. He was like, well, I had to look things up and find out it was an individual right, according to the people who lived at the time. Just look, use your brain, Antonin. Rights are based on individuals. They're not based on groups. Groups are composed of individuals. It's just a name applied to people around each other. So it's always the individual. All you have to do is reduce it logically. But he didn't bother. This is the same guy who ruled at the end of that ruling that rights could be attenuated, which completely undercuts the very definition of what? Oh, yeah, that's right, rights. The very term is specifically denoted to be a hands-off area that people will respect for each other. But Antonin Scalia says, well, there are rights, but... Government doesn't have to respect those. Oh, I see. So the word rights doesn't really mean anything if you're in government. Right, as Bill Cosby would say. Somebody should do a new routine. You know, Bill Cosby had that old routine, uh, Bill Cosby, uh, right, you know, and Noah. And, and, he and, he went, and he and God were going back and forth. And, 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 you know, he didn't believe God was talking to him when he told him to build the ark. He's like, right, how you want me to do it? I want you to build it 200 cubits by 50 cubits. right. What's a cubit? Well, I, I used to know what a cubit was. Anyway, don't worry about that, Noah. So anyway, I'm just thinking about it. they should do a new version with Anton and Scalia. And he's in there and go, right. Yeah, what are those? You tell me you're going to exercise those. Right. Anyway, so he is in the news again, and I'll give this to you in the next segment, uh, in the next, well, maybe, maybe the next hour, I should say. I'm, I'm, I'm misspeaking. Probably in the next hour, first segment of the next hour, if we can get through some of the news and the Bundy Ranch stuff, uh, because uh, this is particularly galling. He's speaking again about uh, rights, and in this case, he is, uh, he is framing the conversation within the context of, of NSA wiretapping and TSA groping, complete infringements on your privacy, complete assaults, sexual assault in many cases. But, hey, no, no, he, he's got no problem with it. And wait till you not only hear his anti-constitutional, ahistorical argument, but also when you hear his logic, just his internal logic. It's you just say to yourself, OK, it's time to go. You sh you need to retire, Antonin. You should have been out, out to pasture a long time ago, relaxing in Florida. So, OK, let's give you more of that news theme. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. All right. News time. And oh, guess what? We get to talk about since it is news time. We get to talk about lies. Oh, baby. Now, which which do we want to discuss first? Do we want to discuss the fact that CIA Director Brennan, the guy who helped create and uh, maintain the drone strike paradigm under Barack Obama uh, when he was uh, FBI director? Was he? FBI? Yeah, it was FBI. Um, now he's working at the CIA. Or was he NSA? No, it was FBI. And um, now, he's doing, now he's doing the CIA thing. And 
he just so happened to pop up in Kiev. Well, geez, that's weird, huh? Wow, how strange that something that appears to have been because of leaked audio, a coup that was inspired in Ukraine uh, to try to stop the Russians from having influence over gas, uh, gas rights and gas movement in the region, uh, how somehow the European, NATO, and United States uh, forces have have allowed this to happen it just came out of nowhere as spontaneously and yet somehow the cia might be involved because yeah it was discovered that brennan was there under an assumed name in kiev last week there's a little bit of news we'll read that to you later uh but what about other ones oh yeah 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 okay we got to talk about the bundy ranch uh the clive and bunny ranch situation all right well here i think we'll talk about the first piece about how people are going to great lengths to hide Harry Reid's and his son's involvement in the attempt by the Bureau of Land Management under now under the leadership of Reid's former closest aide to 